previously on Anachronology. In 2000. I'm going to the mall. Invention of the home DVD player. I voted for purple, and I thought we were going to win. The Anachronauts. They travel through time by downloading history to their brains and archive the past in order to save the future. With their trusty brain download computer, the Epic Traverseer, they randomly visit the past year after year. Join them as they embark on their next adventure. Prepare yourself for an acronology. Hey Hello. friends. Hey there. Hi. Welcome back to Anachronology. I am Tom here with my good pal, friend, and co-host, Mr. Clay. How are you, Clay? Doing well, Tom. How are you guys doing? Welcome to Anachronology, where it's about damn time. I believe this is uh, episode seven, Tom, and uh, having a blast so far. And if hopefully the listeners out there, you guys are having a blast. And if you like, you can give us a little a little help, do a little clicky, do a little subscribey on our YouTube channel. And if uh, you like, you're feeling generous, we have a Patreon uh, where you just pay $5. You get bonus content. You get a new segment every episode, and it's just for those special people who are patrons come be an acronaut with us and you know just get more of this fun time as we hang out every week going through time archiving the past yeah well put clay absolutely the patreon's really where the party's at uh i can't stress it more i think it's a great bang for your buck for five bucks a month uh every episode all the patreon members uh they get basically a an extra segment and they get an extra category. I mean, that's a total of at least over a half an hour more of an acronology of that chosen year. We've had a ton of fun making the bonus content. I think also from our Patreon members, uh, we're very much open to what you want. What can we do more of? What are some fun segments we can toss in the mix, categories, things to talk about? Um, you are an anachronaut like us. So when you're in the team, we respect what you got to say. We're going to hear it out. So let us know. Throw it in the comments of those videos. Or even if you're a Patreon member, you're also part of the sweet Discord group that we have where uh, we're always chatting it up when it comes to the uh, the world of time travel. So come be a member. And if you don't want to be a member, like I said, just subscribe. Uh, last episode, Tom, I believe we were in the mid 90s. Um, I were. obviously obviously don't know where we're going to be going today. Oh, man. But if mid 90s had anything to uh, say, go for it. Um, <laughs> uh, we had a nice like we had a fun we had a fun game come out of it. It's something we never done before. We actually played a game on the uh, on the show. So I'm well, I'm. I am excited to see what's uh, wherever we go this year uh, or this episode, what year, um, what we are going to do, because uh, we try to keep it fresh. We try to keep it light, breezy, and uh, we don't know what we're going to do until we get told where we're going by our trusty computer, the Epic Traverser. Yeah, let's head over to Epoch Traverser. Let's see where we're going this year, uh, where it has selected our time travel to be. And then from there, we will take a trip to the past. Let's do it. It is time to find today's time coordinates from the Epoch Traverser. 96. Um, 96. I don't know. Maybe we're going to shoot really into the 2000s. 2011. That's my guess. 2011. 2018. All right. 82. That's the, the year of your birth. All right. What do we got here? 8 yeah, bit. Okay. Hold on. Okay. I know what it is. All right. It always feels like somebody oh, wants me. me. Oh, nice. A little Rockwell, baby. 8-Bit Rockwell. Nice. Ooh. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Robot Ladies. 82. That That's is correct, my friend. Year of my birth. In 1982. So both way wrong in that prediction. We were mm. thinking 2000s. 82, baby. I mean, off the top of my head, I was but a young developing brain. I don't remember much besides... Um, you know, my binky, my bottle. Um, I'm sure I'm going to get an influx of memories on this one. But yeah, dude, it was the beginning of the 80s. It was a wild and fun time. I wasn't even born. Uh, <laughs> very possible. I was just living in my dad's balls. So um, yeah, dude, just but a thought. For you were a ball time. baby, dog. That's in my, wild. Uh, in my yeah. parents, my parents' mind. But so man, <laughs> this, this, type, uh, this is the earliest we've ever been. This is the earliest we've ever been. 
Yeah, that's true. Because uh, if you've tuned into the show before, you know, basically um, our mission here as an Acronauts is we're actually supposed to, we've had been carved out a period of time for our, our archival session. It's 1982 to present because obviously we have lived in those, those years. So our evil overlords have given us that duty to travel. And this is, this is literally the, the very earliest point on the timeline. So I'm incredibly interested to see what we pull up here. Um, and again, for those of you that are new to the show, you've never watched it, it's your first time. First of all, thank you for tuning in and you're in for a wild trip. We're going to go back to said year. We're going to find out again what categories we're talking about and we're going to get into it. So I would prepare yourself for the neural temp temporal leap. Um, for some people, it's fun. For some people, it's a it's a disaster. I just hope your brain doesn't melt like some people. So hang it tight. It gets easier every time. It gets easier every time. It does. Clay, I will see you on the other side, my friend. Be right back. Goodbye. Access granted. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. This segment of the Anachronology Podcast is brought to you by Lil Sneezy's Baby Grills. Is your little one ready to show off some bling in their mouth? Introducing Lil Sneezy's Baby Grills, the hottest new accessory for babies and toddlers. Why should adults have all the fun showing off flashy grills? Now your child can sport some seriously cool diamonds, gold, or chrome grills for on their teeth too. Designed just for tiny teeth, Lil Sneezy's Baby Grills are safe, durable, and guaranteed to make your baby the coolest kid on the block. Your infant will love the love flashing their new smile. <laughs> your infant will love flashing their new smile bling and you'll love seeing your baby's face light up when they look in the mirror little sneezy's baby grills start them young with the freshest gear for baby teeth what's better than a smiling happy baby with a grill call now to order a set you are watching an acronology Yes, and it is about damn time. And we're here in 1982. Congrats, you made the journey to the other side. What's up, Clay? Well, 1982. Okay, so we've got, uh, we've, we've, I have <sighs> no memory of this since I did not live through 1982, but we have current yeah. events or the year in review, usually, I should say, not current events, the year in review, 82. Yeah, I think now we've reached this point. Here we are. We're back in 1982. The Epoch Traverser has helped to temporally download all the information to our brains. AI producer has curated, obviously, our, our show programming for today. Let's get into it. 1982. That's a little year in review time. What happened in 82, baby? First out, looks like some war. Wars are cool, right? We all dig a little war, a little History Channel exclusive. 82? Looks like off the bat, a little, uh, you know, I guess nothing else is new nowadays, a little uh, Israeli invasion of Lebanon. That's uh, what's pictured here in the black and white photo we see. I don't mean, know much about it, honestly. Yeah, I don't have uh, a political science degree. I am not nearly well read enough. Uh, I no, am not well I studied know. enough to, no. to, to try and fix the ongoing problems in the Middle East. But yeah, man. this fucking part of the world man for like two thousand years they have always beefing dudes they've gone from like sticks and stones and swords to fucking tanks I now know. So, uh they're hey. like the eternal like spy versus spy they're like always trying to fuck each other up like one's putting a bomb in a fucking birthday box you know it's like they just fucking hate each other and uh i feel like at least every decade every few years there's some big shit that goes down and 82 is no exception well, starting starting the year off right with death and destruction, you know. Yeah, hey now, and next up, more, <laughs> more death, death and destruction. <laughs> more death and destruction. If that was on your bingo card, you win for eighty two. It looks like also the Falklands War between Argentina and the UK. The UK uh, muscling up, like you said, they had a pretty good run. I I would say the UK and their dynasty. Over I mean, the years. they had literally uh, col colonies on every part of the globe. You know, the it's the the sun never set on the British Empire. Uh, again, I'm not too well versed in this conflict, but I know this is just an island off the coast of Argentina. 
Britain, <laughs> there was like their last vestige or one of their last vestiges of like what they used to be as a, you know, imperial dynasty. So wow. they they probably just did not want to let that go without a fight. Like Argentina is like, yo, that's that's ours. Even though it's not a yeah. to us, like that's kind of ours. Britain was not having any of it, mate. They said, "Cheerio, we got to go fire, fire some, uh, fire some bombs on y'all." Oh yeah, absolutely. I think that was kind of it. It's like over over the years, like they just they, you know, it was like that the the NFL team that had the dynasty. If if one team beat them, everybody else was like, "There's a way we can we can mm. beat these guys." And then everybody else kind of figured them out, and then they just they weren't big and bad anymore. So yeah, withered into just being, I guess. Fish and chips, Mary Poppins kind of stuff, and they, again, great the royal weddings. They royal they. weddings, yeah. They have, they've had they've had a really good run. So God, right off the bat, eighty two, some war. I okay. guess we could summarize the Gipper, the good old Gipper, uh, Mister Ronald Reagan. Look at him there. He's, he doesn't know where he is, but um, this was his second elected term, if I if I am correct. This was uh, the second uh, go at it as the president of the United States for. Uh, the actor from California, Mr. Ronald Reagan. He's already has dementia here. Like he Look already has. He looks gone. We've talked about Reagan a few times on the show. We've had, I think we've, we have been to the eighties. I think we went to 88 in an earlier episode. And obviously, uh, you know, Reagan, Reagan came up and, uh, he, he has definitely dropped into a lot of conversations we've had. And yeah, man, old man was, was far gone. I mean, he what looks is, like he's people are just like waving at him out in the crowd, like his his staff. Like the the best Reagan is the Reagan puppet from that um, Phil Collins music yes. video. What is it like? The Age of Confusion is that? Oh, the name Land, of of Land of Confusion. Land of Confusion. That's what it is too. <laughs> that, I remember loving that. Wow, dude! Maybe. You know what's so funny? Um, that um, I think I can't. I think it was called like. Is it Spitting Image or something? Was the name? It was from a show. It's from some like British show. Oh no shit! I, I had read about that and I had gone down that rabbit hole. And you know, that is some nightmare fuel. That that <laughs> Phil Collins Genesis video. Those <laughs> those puppets are terrifying. And yeah. you're right, the Reagan one is absolutely terrifying. He, that's he, the best version of Reagan. <laughs> it's the creepiest. Yeah, I would prefer that than the actual and President guy, Ronald yeah. Reagan. All right, Reagan. So Reagan's back in and in eighty two. Hey, let's get in. Let's get into some pop culture. Uh, yeah, we had, of course, the big, uh, the big uh, movie moment of '82 was definitely ET, the extraterrestrial, Steven Spielberg's, I think, timeless classic. ET got like he looks kind of like Ronald Reagan. <laughs> yeah, he's throwing some Reagan vibes. Reagan, that's it was hot to trot. Uh, I remember this is one of the first, if I think this might be the first movie that um, us as a household owned on VHS. I wow. Wants is I have very fond uh, memories of this. Like that's a good one. Yeah. Even like there was some sort of like promo code where you could like cut out the UPC. Cause I remember the box had like the UPC was missing, but those this, were hot. This movie was my, this movie was so, uh, was such a must have that my very frugal parents, uh, <laughs> Or whatever it was like fifty dollars or whatever the hell cost of a VHS tape was, so we could be the proud owners of uh, ET when this came out on VHS. I I have very early early memories of ET actually, and it's weird. I don't know if they they must have at that time re released it in the theaters a few years after, but I have a very early memory as a child going to see ET and and being just absolutely. Uh, heartbroken and weeping oh. and crying in the oh, movie dude. theater when when he's all like white and dying and shit oh, when he's yeah. all like on his deathbed it just fucked me up as a little kid and i remember my mom oh, taking dude. me out of the theater and bawling in her arms it was <laughs> awful it was so I, awful. I do i don't have i do not remember like a, that but that strong of a memory happening at the movie theater but 100 percent, i remember crying oh. watching this oh it's like in, oh. in the living room 100 percent and it is one of those films that it's just so like I ET it, it's so uh, elevated by the John Williams score as well and yeah. and, it, and there's that there's I still I, I I think I get choked up that I'll be right here when he oh. when he touches his oh, heart man. it's like melting Elliot. melting yeah and, it goes, and the iconic line ET phone home I mean how often was that you know thrown yeah. around ET phone home dude beautiful yeah so obviously eighty two was crowned with ET. Uh, and, oh, crowned yeah. with Tootsie, and crowned with Tootsie. Another just, I guess, really monumental movie moment of 82 was Dustin Hoffman in drag. Uh, if I mean, if he, anything yeah. can show you like suspension of disbelief, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. the Hollywood magic making Dustin Hoffman like a uh, oh. five, five foot five, you know, New York through and through Hebrew being a like yeah. sassy, like kind sassy, of. like uh, 
I don't remember where Tootsie is supposed to be from uh, in the country, but you know, some little vixen or dynamo. But um, man, Tootsie, oh, I'm who's the who's the boss that like doesn't he like grab her by like the junk or something? Like, like the, there when the is, reveal there is, is some definitely inappropriate yeah. moments in Tootsie, some yeah. some workplace inappropriateness that probably wouldn't mm -hmm. have fly today, but. Yeah, and honestly, I mean, really, Dustin Hoffman now, I mean, he just looks like a, you know, a retiree at the Villages or something. He's pulling it off pretty good. I mean, I, you really couldn't tell the difference besides the Adam's apple. He, he really killed it. Yeah, Way to go Tootsie. on Tootsie. I know, went from E.T. to Tootsie. Tootsie. Uh, and Blade Runner. Okay, that's, well, that's a pretty big sci-fi film to have dropped in 82. That was a big one, too. I think a lot of people went out and saw this Rid Ridley Scott classic, Harrison Ford. Um what's the creepy the the jacked dude uh rutger hauer uh, is awesome Howard, rutger hauer. and who's the woman uh, something yeah Sean? it's that's Sean, Sean young and then Sean um young. also young um daryl hannah is pris right isn't daryl hannah nice. pris, the uh like she's right. like the sex the sex the sex android or the sex synth yeah dude I know this a, was again uh, ahead of its time very ahead of its oh, yeah. time in, in this in, in in the special effects and the the aesthetic of it this is rad uh, one of the <laughs> one of the things that I remember, um, I think when this came out, when I saw, I remember seeing it in um, you know VHS or cable, or whatever, like we were younger. And then um, as you know, DVD or Blu-ray, whatever came out, I remember rewatching it. And I just for whatever reason, I never noticed it until I got like a better uh, resolution or or you know upscale of the film. Fucking Deckard. Uh, Harrison Ford, he is tie is like a double tie. Have you, have you yeah. ever noticed? Dude, a it's double a tie. double it's tie. Awesome. Dude, like that is one thing that uh, they got wrong about the future. I mean, we're working yeah. towards robots, but the yeah. double tie never fucking caught on. Double I, double tie didn't catch, so I don't think so. But I I feel like it was pretty on point with most of the innovation too of tech and where we wanted to go. I think with technology, but yeah, Blade Runner is definitely a cool, influential sci-fi film, and that dropped in eighty two. Uh, other moments in 82, of course, uh, hey, the, the premiere of Cheers. Cheers premiered in 82, and obviously Cheers was like the one big show of that time period, really. I mean, I don't know how many seasons Cheers went on for, but it went on forever, into the 90s, right? The early I 90s. Gonna, I was going to say, I think it went like MASH was the most watched finale, and then I think Cheers was like wow. slightly behind it. And I, and I think like cheers might have had more than seinfeld or maybe i'm getting that wrong but there were so many people that love that damn show i mean that's it like basically almost broke uh the record for the most watched series finale obviously not in 1982 but i mean it's got to start somewhere and i can notice in this image um ai producer you you done goofed because there's no coach the the old oh, dude where's coach yeah, You're right. coach, I mean... yeah he's uh he's he's there is no woody in season one it's a uh, coach yeah, you're right. Coach is either drunk on the floor in this picture or he's taking a piss in the bathroom, but he's not in this. He's not in this cast photo. And it looks like you got both the Kirstie Alley and. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. And, and Shelly Long. Shelley Long, who are the kind of the two. They weren't ever really on at the same time. Right. One left and the other came in. Yeah. And then. Love interest for Sam. And obviously, uh, you've got uh, Kelsey Grammer in his uh, alcoholic cocaine time. I mean, oh, he's yeah. looking, he's just waiting okay, to go yeah. to the bathroom. He's just he's waiting to get out of there. He's like, are we done with this photo shoot? I got some yeah. I gotta be. <laughs> but fucking cheers, dude. Cheers reigned supreme. And I've obviously started in 82. Also, the Dave Letterman, oh, Letterman show premiered in 82. His first guest ever was Mr. Bill Murray. You oh, see, damn. look at look at this like 80s set too. Jesus Christ. And I would say that. This was kind of the birth of, I would say, really, you know, up until Jay Leno came on the scene and took over, you know, from Johnny Carson. Right. This was a, a new kind of challenge, you know, bringing an, another talk show into the mix. And I think, God, Letterman reigned the airwaves for a long time and him and Leno always battled it out in the late night wars. Yeah, this is also, uh, I know that uh, Conan uh, always looked up to Letterman as, uh, you know, and obviously Johnny Carson too, but That's how cool. for someone who was, Johnny Carson wanted Letterman to take over for him and the big wigs at NBC said, no, we're going to go with Leno as their guy. So mm -hmm. obviously Letterman goes to CBS, he has his own show. But um, as far as being a host of late night where celebrities come on and you have a little sit down where they hopefully don't take themselves too seriously, I know that uh, Conan definitely, you know, takes a lot of out of his playbook from Letterman. And uh, one of this isn't one of my favorite um, memories I have of Letterman. This obviously is in 82, but he used to go around like 
I don't know, like uh, he was like a man on the street stuff. And he went to fucking Taco Bell one time and he <laughs> ordered like 200 tacos. Oh my and God. he was just going around like in a convertible. And he was just going around <laughs> in a megaphone, just going, we have tacos. And he was just giving away tacos. Like that was the that. segment he did was he was just went around and gave out free tacos. <laughs> yeah, you're right. He kind of was, he kind of invented the wild segments, yeah. I think, rather than the, the more tamed in studio stuff mm. that was the Tonight Show. Um, I think that you're right. Conan definitely took a page from that book. And I think, yeah, Letterman again, he just kind of, he, he marched to his own beat and, uh, started in 82. 82. I did not know that. Uh, Hey now, <laughs> Hey Michael, <laughs> we got, uh, we got <laughs> Kit <laughs> and, uh, and Michael <laughs> from, from Knight Rider, which was uh, also premiered in 82. Um, I was, I remember being a kid and liking Knight Rider. I thought Knight Rider was a cool oh, yeah. concept. I probably didn't understand it. And I definitely didn't appreciate the incredible chest hair that, um, Hasselhoff's rocking in this picture. God damn. I remember, I, I also was a, as a kid, loving me some Knight Rider. And awesome. I can remember, I remember like, um, just being like, oh man, this car is so cool. Like, oh, that's not from it talking, right? Just like it, the, it, it the shots cool. of the car driving dude and then yeah. i remember seeing it like you know fast forward when i was i don't know probably late teens maybe even early 20s or something and there's some you know night rider rewatch <laughs> and the fucking, like it's Jeez. just a crappy dude it's just a crappy it black awful. like corvette it does dude, it is, it's yeah. just it's <laughs> crap with it's got like lights on the front yeah. i mean it's, it's like tinted you know what i mean yeah. there's really nothing too too crazy special about it aside from it talks by uh the voice of mr feeney from uh boy meets world <laughs> that's right yeah that's right mr feeney's the voice um the only thing I remember was just the terrible writing on it. I remember there's like the episode where like he fights like a bizarro him that's played also by David Hasselhoff oh, and he nice. and he drives like another kind of smart, sophisticated vehicle. And it's the it's one of the most cringeworthy television episodes ever captured. And uh, of course, it was it was the glory of Knight Rider way ahead of its time. In 82. Oh, I mean, gorilla. 82 is truly, I think encapsulated by this album thriller was was and probably still is one of the biggest albums ever to ever been made by anybody regardless of the jaded past of mj it is a powerhouse album and you got to think about it too it's like there's the there is thriller and that song is like it, it did work its way into just kind of being synonymous with halloween it, it's just there's so many iconic elements this picture i mean it's just it's incredible. This this so, this changed music. I uh, also I remember my parents owning this LP, this album. Yeah, and, I remember it too. Uh, my parents, yeah. And I remember like when I was like flipping through the records, and I remember in Thriller, this is obviously the cover of Thriller. But then if you open it up, he's like there with a tiger. Like he that's is. Dude, right. he is with a tiger. And I just remember yeah, always older. being confused, being like, oh, yeah. why is there a tiger here? Because the tiger is not on the front cover. Michael was just probably <laughs> like, no, no, we need to have a tiger. This we'll put it in the middle. We'll just put it. We'll put him on the front cover. It's okay. But I just remember it's so weird. Just being like, why is there a tiger? Here? I. I feel it's a missed opportunity to have not put the tiger on the full like cover of the album because that's some baller shit a tiger and michael jackson yeah, but uh you know it was like some saudi prince's tiger on loan for like the the fucking photo shoot i want to buy it i mm -hmm. want it's gonna be my tiger he wanted a monkey they're like we need something more badass michael but what about a tiger we throw a tiger in there could you handle that i want a chimpanzee but yeah incredible movement for music was thriller 82 Cable TV, cable TV, the prominence of cable TV uh, rose in 82. Its popularity, more people were actually buying um, cable packages, but the real height of cable TV started to peak in 1982. And uh, we can see these people here. They're pretty fucking excited for some cable. That was the that was the thing, dude. Cable. Oh, we have cable now. Holy shit. Man, I'm trying to remember, like, whew, man, when did we at the at the household get cable? Like, I I remember just being a kid, and we had one of the the TV in the living room still had um it had a remote that had a cord attached to it, dude. Like, wow. that's how, yeah, yeah, dude. That's like I remember that was that was like the first TV that I remember us having, um, was one that had like a remote still had a cord attached to it. But I, I'm wondering if when we got uh like the new like like the the, the better it's TV. I wonder if that was when we went from like 13 channels to like 30 or something. Oh, that might have yeah. been when we got cable, but uh, that was uh, at least I, 
I will again wasn't born in 82, but I don't believe even when uh, I was that we had the luxury that is cable TV. In yeah, it was, it, it was exactly as you say. It was a luxury. It was it was it was on a pricier side. I don't think every household rushed to have it. I think at that point, too, people were like, hey, we have rabbit ears. We can get we can get some kind of fucking feed here. Some scrambled, you know, ABC local affiliate. I remember when my parents had it and I remember I think it was Time Warner and it was one of the very early like crappy clunky cable boxes and you're mm. right it probably was 30 stations or whatever and uh it's all you know all hail the coaxial cable man look at that thing it's st it's still around today that's what's crazy i mean granted we're in the age of fiber and you know we're, we're it's all about things that are obviously way faster than than this but the coaxial cable and just cable in general it changed everything it was like yo man check out this signal flow Shit. i mean like i said i remember going from 13 channels to like 33 and being like there's so much more tv there's incredible. so much more out there it's incredible yeah man and then of course again one of the most important moments of 82 was uh the birth of this little sweet Hell, right there. Yeah, guy Oh, look, yeah, at him with that miss, look at that little missing tooth. Now, obviously, I did not come out as formed as this in 82. This is probably, I don't know, I'm probably four in this. This might be more like an 86 thing. But mom, dad, thanks for getting it on and, and yeah. letting me come into this world in 82. It's Rad. a 1982 vintage. It's a 1982 vintage. An 82 baby, the 82 flavor. <laughs> but that's 82. In, in a nutshell, that is kind of the broad strokes of what went down in 82. Now, um, what we do every segment of the show, here we are in 82. We kind of need to find out what it is uh, that we're going to talk archive. about on this episode. What are we archiving? Let's turn Let's turn back to Epoch Traverser, AI producer, and let's find out what we're talking about this episode, Clay. Let's go, baby. Hit, hit me, computer. Let's go, baby. Good. Back, <laughs> grown odds. Welcome to today's year. Please proceed in discussing the following categories provided by your galactic overlords. Thank you and have a wonderful day. All right, I'm ready. What are we going to talk about? Oh. The category is tech. Okay. 82. Okay. Futuristic, I'm sure. Futuristic. It will not be. The category is fads. Fads. Okay. Fantastic. 82. There's a lot of high pinks. The category mm, is music. Oh, I like some music. There's bound to be some, Let the some good stuff in here. All right. So uh, yeah, we have not. tech, fads, and music. Tech, fans, and music for 1982. Wow. I mean, those are all fairly interesting. I think we've hit a few of these before in the past. Um, I mean, I don't have that much confidence that tech is going to be incredible when it comes to 82. I mean, you talk about just being very much not on the forefront of, of technology in 82. I'm sure we were just kind of rounding the corner on some technology pieces there. I mean, um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of like, just even on it comes to, um, like, I know we did, we had a, some N64 was on our nineties episode last week and I know there is got to be some game system, but I don't care if Atari Atari seems like earlier than, uh, you know, the 1982. So I'm, I'm wondering, you know, obviously Game Boy, I know we uh, we touched upon, but that's you know way too late for this. So I, there must be something that is not quite, you know, N64, but not quite Atari. There's got to be something right in there. 1982. Uh all right, let's get into our first category then. Let's get into tech, tech 1982. And again, like we're saying, I don't think like we were on the forefront of groundbreaking tech. I could be wrong, uh, but I know that tech did exist in 82. Uh, so let's let's get into it. Uh, first out the gate is the incredible release of Remember It Well, the Commodore 64. Okay. Now, um, yes, this exactly. I think this was probably the very early precursor to kind of like um, the Atari possibly, I think might've came a few years after this, if I'm correct. Yeah, I don't, I do remember I had a cousin that had a, a Commodore 64 and I was so jealous because they had uh, a bunch of games, dude. They had, uh, really, dude, I remember their Commodore 64. There was like this, 
<laughs> um, like gunfighting game where you'd use a joystick to like oh, pull sweet. a quick draw somebody. Oh, there yeah. was Maniac Mansion. Um, I remember I mean, Maniac I'll, Mansion was sweet. And, dude. And I, and I know that like yeah. like 1982 again. Like I'm not sure what was on the the Commodore 64 and 82, but all I know is when I was playing it when I was younger, there was the Predator like from you know the Arnold Schwarzenegger Predator movie oh, had a oh, Commodore 64 game. Uh, Police Quest was on Commodore 64. I mean, dude, there's I just have nothing but uh, very fond memories of uh, going over to my cousins and literally just being like, I want to play your computer because I don't yeah. have that. And having a blast on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, basically, AI producer saying it was it did become really at, in the time the best selling single personal mm -hmm. computer of its of its time. And I mean, it definitely I believe you hope we're hooking it up to like a television monitor for the most part. Right. It kind of had the it had this it had the I remember this vividly, the oh, big yeah. clunky keyboard the, and just kind of this muted kind of nasty tan color. But then these like this rainbow and blazed logo on it. <laughs> Dude, I'm having I'm having a flashback of like sitting oh, in man. front of this thing. They had like one of those crappy like computer kneeling chairs. You remember those <laughs> things, dude? Oh, like God. that, dude. That was like what I'm was having that a ever about. Dude, I don't know, but I remember like that was like their computer chair. It was that crappy thing? I remember being like, "Why did you?" But you 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 have enough money to have a Com Commodore 64, and you have this piece of shit like kneeling chair. Oh. Dude, I, you know, it's so funny. I see that in my head now. And I think I, I had a friend that had one and I was just like, it just seems so uncomfortable and stupid. I didn't really understand the purpose of it. And but, I also uh, I, I also remember that they uh, there was a freaking a video game they had that was like a nudie, like a um, like a strip poker game or something. And I can remember like my cousins ooh. and I like being being uh you know, dude, it's like horrible, like eight bit digital. Yeah. Like it's like boobs. Breasts. But I remember being like, oh man, we're looking at boobs. You can't get caught. So wow. the Commodore, the Commodore 64 yeah. had it all. They were rocking. Let's take had a look all. at a couple of a uh, couple of video archives on on Commodore 64. This is a Toys R Us store in Redwood City, California. But from what you see hanging on the racks here, you think it ought to be called Software R Us. <laughs> Most of the titles mm. being sold here are for the Commodore 64, one of the original home computers, but there's a lot of life left in that old machine. New software titles still coming out for Dropping them. a very large installed user Let's base. See. Today we You're really boring. Oh, I want to see old lady Commodore playing 64. with Commodore 64. This is an interactive program. And as you run through the program, it asks you what style you would like. Mm -hmm. And you have to have one thing before you start, which is the number of stitches per inch and the number of rows what? Of what? you get from a squat. This is for crocheting? All right, we've already decided Get it, Granny. That we're going to make a jacket. And what? We're going to have a, a and I've lost our life savings on, on the stock the market. <laughs> so we're going to have it. This is a knitting game? We have to oh, this looks intense. Knitting, knitting game, knitting Commodore 64. Today. It's baller. We're going to put the neck band right in one with the front band. So, so it's the program a little leads you through the It leads question. you through the whole thing. Then what kind of sleeve do you want? Oh, Granny, what is going on? I mean, here we go. Granny's hacking the Commodore 64 to fucking like do crocheting. That is uh it's pretty baller. Let's look at this. Uh, here's a commercial for the uh the C64. IBM calls this a personal computer and says a person can afford it. Yet it's over wow. dollars Apple says computing is a revolution that can't be missed, but at fifteen hundred thirty dollars in eighty two, that's a lot of money. Says computers yeah, are now it's gotta be like reach. six so, grand maybe <laughs> inflation. What are we thinking? Oh, that's solid price. So, well, it's a couple of paychecks in 82, though. Coming, you can experience the revolution that's here. The revolution that's here. We're putting oh, strip wow. poker in your home for $550. <laughs> 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 All right, let this, we'll watch this last one. This one looks pretty far out. Oh, here we go. This this was me. Yes. And I said, get the hell out of here. I'm trying to play strip poker. Get the crossfire theme. This is rad. This is the best. <laughs> they keep breaking down the door. <laughs> the Commodore 64. Wow. Uh, as, Amazing. As, yeah, as someone who uh, was young enough to play Commodore 64, I can uh, concur. That's exactly what happened whenever you played. <laughs> Kids were just running down, breaking, breaking down shit. Breaking down doors. There were crazy lights. Lights and, and like, lasers coming out of everywhere. <laughs> 
And I mean, that's what made it so badass. It was exactly that. But, you know, God bless Commodore 64 and 82. It was uh, it was a revolution in a package. Uh, also, uh, we couldn't have computer fun in 82 without the first ever computer virus. Uh, I love the name, the Elk Cloner uh, that came out and apparently was written by 15 year old Rich Skrenta. Uh, it was apparently found in the wild, whatever that means. And it apparently affected Apple II computers via floppy disk. And apparently when it would affect computers, it would give this little rhyme. It says elk cloner, the program with a personality. It will get on all your disks. It will infiltrate, infiltrate your chips. Yes. It's cloner. It will stick to you like glue. It will modify Ram too. send in the cloner. So, Hey, look at this. The first ever computer virus which is kind of lame i'll be honest with you I, I i would have expected a little bit more from elk cloner okay so he must have put it on a floppy disk dropped the floppy disks like in public people was like oh a floppy disk i'll put it into my drive and and then get infected um dude what what commercial is this from because this is like rhyme scheme it's it reminds me of um uh, it's log from Red and Stimpy, but it's like it goes downstairs, <laughs> yeah. over in Paris. It's like it'll get it'll, it'll yeah. get on all your discs, it'll get infiltrate your chips. Yes, it's cloner. It'll stick to you like glue. It'll modify RAM to send in the clone. Like I feel like this is some like play on some commercial for something. But uh, you said fifteen year old um, was the author of this, just like a no good Baller. teenager to, to oh, come up with some with some uh, ne'er do goingness, some some nefariousness. But uh, I will give it pretty badass that, uh, you know, the claim to fame is uh, he wasn't, you know, um, a disgruntled, like, ex-military software guy. It was some 15-year-old kid. kid. It, was, it was just like, you want to know what? I'm going to I'm gonna be a little punk. Yeah. I'm going to be some a people's punk, days. And I'm going to I'm gonna infiltrate your chips. I'm going to Dr. Seuss I'm going to Dr. Seuss you. Yeah, man. He's going to throw some some rhyme scheme in there. But, yeah, apparently if you got the elk cloner, it was game over. You didn't want no elk cloner. So stay away from that in 82. Also in tech in 82, um, a, a kind of a big innovation was the movie Tron. Um, and, and really from a from a special effects standpoint, Tron was just super ahead of its time. It was kind of one of the films that like heavily used computer animation exclusively. Um, obviously, if you watch it now, I mean, it doesn't necessarily <laughs> hold up, but I think that it was trying to do some cool shit back then um it looked pretty weird and wild i i i, I still think to this day the tron cycles are a super cool oh, dude. kind of invention the light they cycle. Look so sleek. yeah the light cycles and um yeah dude it was i mean it's it's fairly cool you know i kind of i i can look back on it i don't think i really saw tron until later i didn't really catch it in the 80s i think i had seen it later on and um you know it's a christ they remade it they did a whole other like a what was it called tron legacy or some other like one that they made in like the 2000 like late 2000s well then they Ramp brought back, back uh up. uh what's his name uh bruce bruce boxleitner was uh tron i believe that's the titular uh oh, guy right, right. Isn't, isn't tron isn't that the name of um like the program or something that's played by yep. or he's, like anthropomorphized by bruce boxleitner i do yep. i think if memory serves me that when this came out um the like a f it got snubbed for special effects like the oscar special effects or whatever equivalent like academy uh, award time and yeah. I, and i think the reasoning was because they used like computers to yeah. create like the you know the the obviously the effects and so it was viewed as like cheating or something and then what? um like the next the subsequent you know oscars whatever uh the, the all the all those shows or the uh, films that were nominated had obviously a bunch of uh, computer graphics or what I always thought that was like out of a uh, the undue hate on Tron. It's like yo, they're trying to they're stepping outside the box or doing something that hasn't been done before. And you're punishing you're punishing Jeff Bridges and Tron. And I and I want to say if they only knew the direction yeah. that we were going. I mean, let's take a peek right here. Here's the light cycle scene, which is incredibly popular. Again, it looks like a very glorified old school computer game graphic i mean it does look pretty shitty but but for 82 yeah dude these light cycles oh yeah jeff bridges jeff bridges the dude this guy he's a famous actor of that time i can't remember, I can't remember his name oh baby that. yeah get those Grab light cycles <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> it's just a solid color. Look at it; it looks so bad. I love it. Copy blue leader. Copy blue leader. 
Get it. Yeah, this is also like uh been oh yeah, this the ending is uh, it's very satisfying how this plays out. Playing a little chicken, a little light cycle chicken. The sharp corners. I mean, this isn't And again, this was like very early on green screen, you know, SF uh special effects work, you know. Uh -oh. Nobody was doing this. Get it, he's, get it, get it. He's fooled you. Fooled you. And then uh oh very violent. Oh yeah. Very, very violent. There was this little uh, Tron CGI making of. I think the most difficult thing in doing Tron was to marry the computer. Was wearing my beret. The, the <laughs> cabby hat. And have them feel like they were all in the same All right, place. enough of you jabbing on. Do you got any cool, like, computer things we can watch? On sets that were Anything from about, 1980 Tron? Stuff. Of that CG. There was no Photoshop. There was no manipulating objects like graphics obviously there was no love from the academy modeling of objects they said we cheated and difficult um, and magi sent the vision had their way because we didn't use miniatures what kind of shapes you could create you couldn't create i just want to know all the cocaine these guys did while they were making this yeah good 80s cocaine too like superior 80s cocaine oh, yeah. but obviously it was super groundbreaking and cool and it kind of lasted the test of time. Also, I want to tell everybody, all of the videos that we watch here on Anachronology are actually available for you to watch in saved playlists on our Anachronology YouTube channel. So if we don't get around to like watching the whole thing, they're up there for you to watch. They're all labeled by, you know, our sections and our categories. So have at it. Have a blast. Watch the hell out of these things. We're putting them up there as part of our archival <laughs> purposes uh, for our mission. So check them out. They're there for you to watch. The digital um, library. There we go, Tron again. Yep, you're right. Bruce, what was his name? Box Lighter? Box Lightner. Box Lightner. Yeah. There he is, and his hot chick that's also dressed up. I, mean, I don't even know. I want I you to keep the little... Tron gear on tonight, baby. <laughs> yeah, I want you to keep the Tron helmet on. Keep it on. Okay, also, Tech 82 was a very big year because it was the introduction of the Sony CDP100, the first commercially released CD player. Look at this beast. Yeah. Wow, the first ever CD player. Look at this thing. I'll be honest with you, it looks nice and sleek and very like I don't know. It surprisingly enough, I feel like if this was released in 82, models that were even released later on down the line, this for the first, I guess, commercial released unit, it looks good. Looks nice, sleek. Yeah, the one thing that's standing out amongst uh, the <laughs> out of all the, that's my eyes catching is the CD disc tray. Like, look at how like recessed that is. Like, how deep it, is. it is. Like, put this You're thing right. in. Like, I mean, it's uh, that's. I, I don't know if I mean. Obviously, the the disc spins and it gets read by a laser. But dude, that thing is just. It's like a cup holder. That's not like a CD tray. That is <laughs> deep. Yeah, it is Super big. Bill go. It's super big, and apparently in 82, that bad boy cost $129. Uh, it, that was not cheap by any means, but I mean, yeah, was, that was- Cheaper than I thought, though. Yeah, absolutely. Cheaper than yeah. I thought as well. Let's take a peek here. They got, I got some cool videos on actually what it looked like. So here, right here is, oh, this is a fun commercial. This is apparently the original uh, Sony CDP commercial with John Cleese. No, that's oh, not it's it. Tron, it's Tron Light Cycles. Oh, Tron Light Cycles. <laughs> here we go. Oh, Sony. <laughs> Whoa. It has a mustache. Remember me? <laughs> yes, you do. You know. <laughs> Ring any bells? Okay. <laughs> the Minister of Funny Walks here. Very Monty Python. Take the new stop paper. motion. A remote sound out of the format. Pure sound played by laser. Just listen to that. No hisses and crackles, of course. Amazing. If you do want I mean... that, punch a biscuit, sip a cup of cocoa, and it'll sound just like your old record player. Wow. You know what I mean? Don't you I want Patrick Bateman to come in and just attack this robot with an ass. <laughs> like, he puts on some, uh, he puts on some '80s tunes, some Phil Collins, and just destroys the robot. 
Look at that, though. Sony, whatever will they think of next? Incredible. Like you said, that for, for 1982, for being like the first commercial, you know, home CD player, pretty slick. Why are you playing The Little Mermaid on this? It's very weird. Thanks, man, for getting us copyright dinged. Every, every, every CD player comes loaded with Under the Sea. There's no way to, te to test out that CD player than hearing Sebastian the Crab singing. Singing his beautiful vocals on fucking a laser etched CD. The yeah, fidelity things are unparalleled. I mean, the digital display is nice. I mean, it's solid, bro. It's a solid piece. Yeah, look at that. They had uh, obviously the fast forward, the the track forward, and you talk about. I mean, really? Wow. I mean, what? Coming from fucking like cassette tapes, oh my god, there was no easy way to ever go anywhere on a cassette tape. It was just like take your chances, fast forward. Maybe you're at the end of the song. Maybe <laughs> yeah. you're too far. Like to have a track bookmark was an absolute danger. Oh yeah. This 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 again. The CD the CD player it changed everything. And uh, it's news to me that it was a a drop in '82. But yeah, '82 gave us this beautiful bad boy. Yeah. The, um, like like you said, the track jumping. I just want to say real quick, like the 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 track go forward or back. That's such an important, right like, or such a selling feature. That's like the only smaller than the play button. They're like, which yep. song do you want to go to? You can yep. go right to the song. You can yeah. go right to it. It it cut a lot of the BS mm. out. It was like go right there, and um, yeah, and then it, obviously just CD CDs were so ripe, especially then. Absolutely, I think the thing that absolutely killed. The music industry was the ability to download it and just burn your own CDs. Mm. Screw it. I don't even need to go out and buy it. I mean, because when CDs as like a piece of hardware just became so readily available, I remember buying the big fucking spindles of, of oh, CDs, yeah. man. It was like game over, dude. Game over. But so awesome 730 bucks, it says. 730 bucks. Okay. All right. So uh that's definitely expensive. <laughs> but when yeah. you said like what 129 or whatever the, the list price was, like I thought it was gonna be like 399, but still oh, it says here the system was launched yeah. in Japan. Okay, so that was the Japan price, but you're right. I mean, I wonder yeah. I wonder that 130 dollars. I mean, that was that either an American I think change, it's, yeah. but yeah, damn, yeah. that's expensive, but still, man. But still, that, that must be that must be like 130 1982 dollars, must be 730 like today dollars. Still, that's fucking pricey. That's pricey. Um, rounding off tech. Um, oh, not rounding off tech. Looks like we had a couple more here. My apologies, a producer. Uh, oh, baby, not not just not just the not just the invention of the CD that was awesome, but we got this bad boy right here. What I would call the first ever really cell phone put out in in 73 and apparently this is a um it looks like a, i think it was nike nikon or motorola put this thing out look at it it looks like it, something you'd have in the in the field during war just, <laughs> it has its own like carrying case it looks nuts look at the person like how stupid they look using Dude, that it. that carrying case is like got it's protective so shielding because whatever whatever like microwaves are <laughs> blasting out of that thing need to be contained like i can't i don't know like the, the amount of power that must be like required to to keep that thing going i mean it's dude. heavy it looks so heavy and not it's and it's so funny we, we exactly we went from this where you had to like sling it over your shoulder it all the neck pain that you got there just like like you said probably the fucking like radioactive waves that are just giving your body some kind of cancer at this point it's <laughs> uh it's it's not it's not a win-win okay so ai producer saying this model the first one really was the nokia mobira the, yeah, the Nokia Mobira is what it was called. So Nokia created this prototype. It became very famous. And then they went on to make even one called the Nokia Mobira Talkman. So it's like this was kind of you can even see the like that looks like a cigarette charger right there. That's like attached to it. So what, what would you like plug that into that cigarette jack? The, the fucking the old like cigarette lighter jack in a car. Dude, that whole thing, it looks like part of a dashboard. Like, they just ripped it out. Like, there's a car battery, dude. Like, it I'm looks telling terrible. you. terrible. I don't know. Like, I think they, whoever was designing this, like, the boys in the back room, they were like, this is as small as we can get it. It weighs 80 pounds. You need to have a leather carrying strap. And it like, looks terrible. We got a trade show. <laughs> we got a cigarette lighter. We can put it on the go. All right, here's a commercial for the Nokia Nobira Talkman. Nobira Talkman. All right, let's see how fucking awesome this thing looks. Yeah. 
hey, I'm having phone sex in my car. Yeah, you got that eight that eight ball for me? All right. All right, so they're both in the same car, but one guy has a phone. Yeah, I'm looking at this loser over here. Yeah, this piece of shit. Oh, he's just going to punch him and take his phone. Who just gets out of the car like that, you asshole? Operator? Yeah, I'm sitting in the car next to you. Fuck you. Oh, hey, it's for you. What a loser. Oh, he's angry. If he only had a fucking Nokia Mobira. Look at this goddamn thing. Okay, that that commercial. Wow. I mean, that's the Golden Gate Bridge, but I don't even know. If, uh, <laughs> I don't even know if that was, that was like. I don't know if that was like an American production company that made that. That had like weird, like Dutch vibes or something all over it. Like just getting out yeah. in the middle of the car and, and getting on a payphone. <laughs> they it was like weird, like phone with an F too. That was a kind yeah. of a throwaway there. Like, yeah, oh, right. I don't know about this. I don't know. All right. I mean, obviously, well, it's how incredible how. Dude, tell me about it. It's incredible how small cell phones became, how more compact they came, because obviously people were like, this ain't going to work. Can you imagine like every high school kid walking around with their like cell phone satchel? Like just it'd be this chaos, absolute chaos in another timeline if that happened. I mean, if going by like trend setting has like, you know, being like cool, oh. people have like the, the cool things like homegirl who's modeling this thing like she don't looking cool. So, I mean, this is a tough sell. You know what I mean? Like, I don't not. Some hey, guy. what are you doing? Oh, yeah. nothing. I'm just hanging out, talking on my giant cell phone. Cool. I'm wearing a shirt that looks like curtains. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's necessarily a uh, an accolade of tech in that time, but it was the beginning of something. Um right. Let's round off tech at 82. A, a kind of an interesting milestone was Time Magazine uh, in 1982 actually named the man of the year a computer. How interesting of time. And instead of man of the year, it was machine of the year. And as you can see, the computer moves in, obviously changing the lives of modern day households, businesses, um, okay. soon the dawn of the Internet. All right, this is all right. I like how the um, computer that is on both the desk on the front cover and the little tiny computer on the desk on the I'm guessing the fold out or the insert. Yeah. So those are like few, like even for this time, they're like future looking. They're, they're like computers that look like this yeah, don't yeah. exist. They haven't made from, that yet. They haven't made <laughs> that yet, right? Yeah, yeah. And so like like the even the like the old man on the left and like the the woman on the right, like she yeah. looked pissed at him like she is like dude like, the computer she, he's not like the, she's not looking at her screen he is completely like intent not paying attention to any to her and she is pissed a creepy image too yeah, they're like just, weird statues of people too like i don't even know dude yeah like the graphic on his is like he was looking at their portfolio but you know that he was just looking at some like porn and then she he had to like switch off the oh no i was just checking the the dow jones today honey but she knows more than she knows what's up it looks like boobs george no, um, no, no, that's our that's our stocks. So I guess this is the total encapsulation of the tech boom of 82 is when Time magazine has the stones to go screw man of the year. It's machine of the year. And there you go. The computer getting its limelight and jumping into the zeitgeist where it would then forever be for the rest of time. The computer moves in. Well, it moves I, in, I mean, maybe. that is like that is very prophetic. Statement. Yeah. Every, every, I mean, just not even just our phone being our phone, our phone is a computer. I mean, that's, I, I guess, time, you were correct when you made time, I mean, when you made the computer the machine of the year. You snarky B. Well, that was tech, tech 82, our first category here on Anachronology I, I, in I, the year of 1982. And, and, and yeah, like, and, and I think, like we said, you know, we didn't know what tech was going to be in 82. I mean, I was like, surprised. I mean, yeah, surprised. Yeah, definitely, definitely surprised that that uh, Nokia Mobira. I mean, you you I are want a, one now. Yeah, I want I want, a, I want the lead lined uh, carrying case so I can put my important documents in it because that damn thing was like a walking bomb shelter. Yeah, and that and like basically you could jumpstart your car with it yeah, if you were like stranded out somewhere. So that was cool. Uh, one category down, two more to go. Uh, stick with us. We're going to take a quick break from one of our sponsors here at Anachronology. Uh, we'll be right back with category two. Be right back. See you later. We'll be right back after these messages. Go get yourself some gold. 
Okay, this portion of Anachronology is brought to you by one of our very proud sponsors, Bump and Grinds Coffee. You're headed out for a night of dancing and fun, but you need that extra pick-me-up first? Reach for Bump and Grinds Coffee, the late-night brew made for club goers. This coffee is expertly roasted to give you the energy you need to keep bumping and grinding all night long. The smooth taste with a kick of caffeine will get your heart pumping for hours of non-stop dancing and grinding. Bump and Grinds is packed with vitamins and antioxidants to keep you energized. Plus, it takes great with mixers. You want to add a little splash of something, something extra to that cup. Before you hit the dance floor, get buzzed on Bump and Grinds, the coffee specially crafted to fuel your wildest nights out. Dance till dawn with your new favorite late night drink, Bump and Grinds Coffee. Proud sponsor, sponsor of Anachronology. You are watching Anachronology. Hey, welcome back. Hey, we're back. I hope you guys enjoyed that one of our one a sponsor from one of our many businesses that makes uh, the Anachronology podcast possible. And uh, if you want to make the Anachronology podcast possible, why don't you just do a little favor? You can do a little uh, subscriber over here to our YouTube channel, or if you want to uh, feel extra generous, you can do a little uh, Patreon membership. And uh, you know, you eat the Patreon membership, you get a bonus segment, you get a bonus content every week with one of our uh, with each one of our episodes. And uh, speaking of segments, Thomas, I think we have one here for 1982 don't we yes we do have a segment we like doing these fun little things here on the show tiny little segments and it is officially uh, time to throw to a segment it is officially time to throw to a segment wow as uh, ai producer <laughs> freaks out on us as he usually does to tell us to do a segment because that's what we do like clay said we like to do these fun little entertaining segments one of which we like to call none other than Amazing, amazing inventions. inventions. So, you know, we're in 82. What was an amazing invention to come out in 82? Um, it definitely was not uh, the mobile phone, which we just saw on the last, uh, the uh, on the tech category. We didn't need that bricky box of death. Um, but I think this is a very interesting invention. It's an invention, I think, that rings true to many people. It's part of many people's lives. And um, that invention is none other then Budweiser Light, as it was known in 82, as we have come to know it as Bud Light. And in 82, the Budweiser company decided, yo, everybody loves them some regular Budweiser. Let's give them a, a light version and let's call it Budweiser Light uh, before it got its sh more shortened named to Bud Light. All right. So I didn't like this is kind of blowing my mind right now because I... I is Budweiser Light a different product from Bud Light? Is it a completely different brew? Or is it or is Bud Light rebranded Budweiser Light? Because even like the can is different. You know what I'm saying? Like, is this like is there an OG? Did they make basically uh like a new Coke situation? You know what I mean? Where like they changed the formula? Uh, or is this is is because Budweiser Light, unless they just shorten the name, or is this a completely different um melange of hops and things? Really great question. Uh, uh, AI producers throwing me some information here. So apparently in 82, Anheuser-Busch rolled out its new Budweiser Light in 40 states. Uh, this was, of course, to compete with its arch nemesis, Miller. Mm. Um, and it says here that um, it says Budweiser Light, as it was originally supposed to be called, it says the company uh, bestrode American brewery uh, like uh it says it says here that eventually the name just became more synonymous with people calling it bud light bud for light. short they went with it and said budweiser light is too long we're going to call it bud light so obviously it's you know bud light is what it became famous with but apparently they were like the the marketing geniuses were like yo it's uh it's it started off as budweiser light um and yeah. that, this is obviously what we have uh kind of known it as is Bud Light because Bud Light just rolls off the top. It's uh, it's everybody's favorite carbonated water to drink at a party. Man, I'm surprised. Uh, didn't uh, I wonder if when the slogan like this buds for you came around, but I feel like this is a if the people who bought Budweiser started 
throwing, you know, cutting off the Weiser and just calling it Bud, uh, synonymous, you know, obviously with Bud Weiser. I wonder why it took that long for the Anheuser Busch company to like embrace that. You know what I mean? Like, why didn't they have the marketing figure that out beforehand? Because this seems like really this seems like a real, like you said, it rolls off the tongue. Like, it's let me get a, a switch. absolutely. No, like, let me get a Budweiser light. Let me get a Bud Light. I mean, that's just yeah. Mm. The Budweiser light almost sounds like too pretentious, and it's just exhausting to say. I like that can though. I gotta say, I do yeah, like that can. You can kind of see here in this uh, this picture kind of the the evolution now this is saying april 81 uh the ai producer source is saying 82 and i saw a second source online is saying 82 so 82 budweiser light then it just looks like my god it looks like for some reason i don't know if it was that long if it was really eight years i don't think that's correct but you can see when it changed to that kind of more recognizable Bud Light brand in 90. And then we see how the can evolved and changed all the way up until probably most recently where it adopted this kind of blue color. I mean, what yeah, an very, evolution in branding. Jesus yeah, Christ. very like uh like uh red color, like a can like a canned like post workout drink, you know what I mean? Like some sort of uh like mountain water. If it's not, it's <laughs> I'm getting, I'm totally getting like uh, a, it is New England. It is, uh, the bar is dimly lit. There's a pool table. <laughs> There's like some unattractive people there. Like that, <laughs> see the, the can, but I really do like the design on the can. The, the lower right hand, the evolution of it, man, I could, that is, you know, college party all over it. It's very, I can see how they upped or, redesigned it for the modern times but my the the madman lover in me has a little um has a little soft spot for this old design i agree too i really like the use of the like the silver blue red mm. kind of look of the old can i have to say that kind of the one on like the far top right and the one on the far left bottom i think they ran into a lot of trouble there you look a little too much like a coors mm. you know yeah. like that coors i can see that silver coors can and maybe that's what made him just say, yo, we need to flush this out and have like one solid color. But I'm amazed. They literally just like that far right Bud Light has no red in it at all. They were like, yo, baby, we're we're blue, white and maybe some silver in that bad boy. But that is a big change. Yeah, I think there's just like a little bit around the shading of the yeah. uh, letters themselves. But I mean, yeah, they're going from mucho red in the other cans to just completely, like you said, they're, they're, they're replacing it all with like silver. You're going more coarse territory, gang. But what an amazing invention it was. And obviously, you know, Bud Light became just such a thing. Um, everything from just making incredible large Super Bowl spots, their commercials and kind of advertising was always kitschy and fun. And as soon it was just ador adorned by other famous celebrities that just kind of took it on as their own brand, uh, like good old Kid Rock here. I mean, he 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 loves sipping on some Bud Lights. Um he likes exploding them with his his machine guns. He has a great old time with with Bud Light, and who could also forget the uh, the Hang Ten Spuds, baby? Spuds. I think we talked about Spuds on a past episode too. I mean, he was a uh, this dog fucked. I mean, Spuds McKenzie was he was living the life in the eighties. You know, hawking that Bud Light everywhere. I mean, there was spring break. There was merch, there was t-shirts, there was the stuffed animals, uh, the, like every different, uh, whenever different holiday rolled around, there was a different commercial with Spuds doing something at Christmas, Whoa. Spuds doing something for, you know, 4th of July, Spuds doing something for, you know, Halloween. There was, oh, there was, oh, they had no shortage of, uh, Spuds McKenzie promos for Bud Light. Dude, yeah, he was, he was the hottest dog of the 80s. Um, let's check out this video. This is just another video I, uh, I found online. Uh, 150 years of Budweiser history in two minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, wow. What name? Adolphus Bush. And Adolphus father, Bush. Uh, Eberhard Einheiser partnered in 1864 to begin brewing those brews in St. Louis. 87 or 78 76 yeah i can see you have excellent taste i'm gonna steal your money drink prohibition non-alcoholic beer yeah they, were still, making, that they were still making beer though they were still making beer oh of course they brought in their famous uh the clydesdales which have been always synonymous with budweiser those fucking horses drunk ass horses nice 
Three horses became the official mascots of the beer. Yeah, see, Spuds okay. McKenzie was way cooler than the horses. I mean, he surfed. Of course, he was cooler than horses. He was a surf. Those those horses can't <laughs> surf. It would be impossible. I would love to see a, a horse surf, though. In I the forties, only... Budweiser crowned itself. It did take the crown. It was like, yo, fuck everybody else. We're taking royal stature on here. We're the king of beers. And ballsy move, Adolphus and Aderhard. King, king. Yes, they went from king of bottled beer to old beer. That's kind of true, honestly. The Budweiser bottle has kind mm. of never changed. It, it it keeps like obviously the same shape. It has all the same kind of branding. That's pretty cool, man, for it to just go, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Aberhard. Yeah, look at the fucking variations on that. The can has had 12 major variations. I love those old, old ones on the left. Weren't those like the pull tab oh, beers? Yeah. And I how think... many people, how many people cut themselves on those fucking things? Jesus Christ. I think even there was like lead or tin or something before like aluminum. <laughs> like, no, that's why they rusted out all the time because they didn't have aluminum yet. Look at the fucking evolution. Here we go. So 82 Bud Light debuted as a nod to Americans, of course, weight conscious lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. There's a commercial for beer while he's got like cyclists. Like, man, after I bike for 10 miles, I just want to have a nice cold 12 pack all to myself because I'm health conscious. <laughs> I know. And and Budweiser, of course, yeah, sport watching male. Makes sense. 1988. All right. So 82 was on the money. So 82, that is kind of when it happened. Let's take one last peek here. Uh, here is a Budweiser light commercial. Bring out your best. Oh, man. I wasn't drafted till the seventh round. <laughs> Who? They don't even know my name. I don't know your name either. Who is this? Hey, who are you? I want to get a beer with him and kiss him a little bit. The, <laughs> co the coach is giving moist looks. He ain't giving like football looks. They all. There's a lot of moist looks. Mm -hmm. like this. Wow! The big chorus at the end. Yeah, that was. Oh, I think that, that was like. That was a much like as much as a commercial for beer as it was for like veiled homosexuality. Like, those guys were like, "Hey man, do you want to go not tell our wives about what we're gonna go do after drinking some Budweiser?" Have you ever had a cold Budweiser light, Billy? <laughs> <laughs> with no pants on, with a fellow man. Yeah. Here's one more. Ooh, this one's fucking tripping. Yeah, for the health. They were appealing, male. appealing to all the sports, obviously. We're doubling down on sports. All right, listen. Listen, buddy, I know you're upset. Don't worry about it. Why do you have a Bud Light and kiss me? It's okay. Is he drunk on the ice? Oh, he is. Dude. <laughs> it looks kind of maniacal and psychotic. On the breakaway. Oh, he should have. He should. <laughs> he, no. He should be missing all these shots. He just stabs him with his skate. Fucking shit. He just loses his mind. He is absolutely fucking off his tits on Budweiser Light. After you lose your starting job as a goalie, just go hit the showers and drink your pain away in a Bud Light. Great game, guys. We're going to go cry in the shower and all drink Budweiser Light. Yeah. Look at They're just cracking them on. They're just cracking beers on the fucking pine. Like, guys, let's get into the locker room first before, before we start yeah, right? ripping some Budweiser Lights, dog. Well, that's interesting. So that's uh, really, there you go. That is uh, Amazing Inventions, uh, focused on 82, Amazing Invention of Bud Light. And again, like like you said, man, Bud Light's to this day. I mean, they're just like, the party gets turned up when the, someone would roll in with, I'm going to definitely geographically place us and say, roll up with a 30 rack 30. of Bud Light, because that's a, that's a Northeastern thing. That 30 rack, the most affordable purchase of a ton of watered down fucking beer, basically. Oh, Get man. it. The, uh, the, that, and I, um, I know everyone has had uh, the red solo cup nights, but what's in those red solo cups? We have beer pong. Well, many times when we were doing it, it was Bud Light oh, back in the day. It was Bud always, Light. always Bud Light. Mm. Um, I haven't had Bud Light in a very long time. I think after this, I'm going to have a Bud Light. I'm going to celebrate <laughs> with a Budweiser Light. It, if, uh, hopefully, that'll be our sponsor next uh, next episode. <laughs> we'll get that. Sweet, Dude, sweet that'd be money. awesome. Yeah, I'll take that. Bud Light money. <laughs> I'll take that Budweiser money. Yeah, please. All right. 
moving on to our second category here in 1982. If you are uh, just joining us, uh, we uh, are on category number two in the year 1982. And uh, we're going to be talking about, uh, you know, those fads, those cool things that just so, so happened in, in the year 1982. All the cool kids were doing the fads. We'll go through some of those things and what was cool and, you know. What was, <laughs> it was what the was fad hip. of drinking Bud Light and, and having a yeah, mental break. Drink, <laughs> oh, yeah. Drinking, da- drinking Budweiser Light and uh, having a fucking sports breakdown. So 82, um, a big fad in 82 was the flair for fashion. The 80s fashion was always just incredibly like bold colors, um, after just tons of dramatic flair, uh, statement patterns, exaggerated sleeves. Uh, of course, who could forget woman on the right? The power shoulders were a big thing. Those shoulder pads reign supreme. That looks like Kathy Ireland. I was going to say, my, dude, dude, that does look like Kathy Ireland. That's life. my girl. That's Kathy Ireland. Oh, yeah. I, I couldn't miss her in a lineup. Oh, man. She's looking beautiful as ever. God. I remember. I think that was like my first like celebrity crush probably was her. I mean, I, I mean, she, she was everywhere first, in the 80s. One of the first posters adorned mm-hmm. on my my young walls. Absolutely. But, um, dude, yeah, weird time. A lot of very strange fashion. Um. I mean, just look at the 80s. It just looks like the 80s was just one big music video, really, for fashion. But this was the thing. It was all like dressing hip and cool. It was a it was a fad to look fashionable. I mean, they look kind of ridiculous, but um, that's I think it's very aptly put, Tom. Like you said, every uh, was just one big music video. And I think even looking at these um, outfits that they have on now, it's, it's kind of striking me. It's like that seems like you it was one of those rare moments in time where no matter what clothing style or choice you made, like it all worked because none of it did like, this is, there's like no good choices here. That's really well. No good choices. Yeah, you're right. And it was all this mix match of like clashy colors, really vibrant, loud colors. And just like, you know, it it was also a, 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 a year and a decade of accessories. It was all like, put this big fucking thing on big necklaces and earrings. And it just looked really fucking awful. Honestly. Um, I mean, just look at, look at that. Look at that. Look at that sweater. She looks like she's ready to fucking suplex that kid. Um, <laughs> they, look, they look like, they look like children of the corn. If they had like their dad worked at the fortune 500. That's so <laughs> weird. That's so weird. Children of the JC Penny spring catalog. Yeah. No, and then I love no. and fitness was always a thing like fitness, like aerobics were big in the 80s. So it was like it was like, hey, I'm going to go to the gym and do my aerobics class. But you bet your ass I'm going to look good doing it. I mean, look at these ladies. They're not, you know, I'm not breaking a sweat. Uh, ladies got a I, over there. It, hey. So like uh, oddly, right. It's like I the the one kind of like normal outfit <laughs> is that girl in the no sweat like she's wearing like uh, for some reason she's wearing like a long sleeve good. sweatshirt to the gym which is weird and it like looks little really shorts hot from, yeah yeah oh yeah but there is definitely like that seems to be like the one kind of like like <laughs> normal like normal thing to like with this article of clothing dude everything else it's like they're these girls are like in a circus like this looks like you're part of yeah. the like humbling troop not that you're gonna go like work out and then homegirl is in a bathing suit that's not like that's like a that's not a workout leotard it's a bathing suit you're gonna chafe in that sweetheart i'm gonna tell you right now yeah there's but yeah some slip boots yeah there's just some absolutely outrageous fashion fads going on in the 80s um yeah oh, so, and that's demi that's, that's young demi. demi young demi moore um that looks like uh jerry hall to the very far right there and sean is that sean young in the middle that looks like a it sean could be like, yeah it's, it's yeah a, uh, finkel is einhorn kind of thing going on there yeah, in the middle right. but um this is also the other big i, I had mentioned before the fashionable fad was big jewelry big like and they called it costume jewelry it looks ridiculous it's like there's no reason to wear that much jewelry it looks heavy and awkward i mean look at her her whole neck looks like it's weighed down jerry hall i mean she's got insane she could choke somebody out with those things it's It's nuts how many how many bracelets are on demi's hand there like how many that's not one bracelet dude like that is too many bracelets (laughs) It's like we should do a raffle. How many, uh, if you guess correctly, how many bracelets Demi Moore is wearing in this picture? What is and the she's got total insane, weight of her costume jewelry? Insane feathered hair. That hair is so feathered. And there's just the crimping, too, like that crimping effect. Crimping. Like, 
that's that had to take a long that had to take her hairstylist a long time. It's all, about as many time to put on all those bracelets. Lots, lots, and lots of jewelry uh, was also part of the fads. Just jewelry it up, baby. The more jewelry, the better. The cheaper, the better. The bigger, the better. Um, moving on, another big fad of the '80s and '82 was the ever amazing mullet. It the was, Clooney it was, mullet. It was mullet time in the '80s. Men and women both fashionably rocked mullets. This is solid George Clooney mullet. This is like a, an attack of the killer tomatoes mullet, I believe. This was around his his kind of big breakout. But yeah, Clooney wore the mullet fairly well. Very nice. It's got it's got good heart to it in the back. It's looking good. You know, I gotta I, I gotta say, Clooney, Clooney pulls it off. I I believe I don't be, I don't think I ever had a mullet. Like I'm I believe uh, I that, so. that 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 I was too uh, like old or young or I don't know how you want to like phrase it to to miss this boat. Well, like, but well, your parents I, cared. It's, it's yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> but but like you said, like uh, like it's it's odd how prevalent of a look this was in the eighties. And like you said, I mean Clooney Clooney is pulling it off. But I'm just imagining all the other times where you see a person in a mullet and it's like how do you think is the wearer of that in looking in the mirror like this looks good like this looks good because it is so hard to pull off a mullet so it takes hard. it takes george clooney to at least kind of give it somewhat of a fighting chance and in back at this time it was it, i guess you could really even say at this time it was appropriate appropriate and fashionable now it's a caricature of, of oh, yeah. it. it's almost a gag it's a laugh you know but I mean, um, here we go. And women, women rock the mullet too. I mean, I can't think of her name. Quirky. I know, I know, I can't. You know who she is. Wasn't I she? Know oh, is. Man, Marky Post. Marky there you Post. go. So honestly, Marky Post is rocking that. That's and that was the thing. They would like kind of spike it up in the front. The porcupine I mean, that, front. Absolutely. Oof. That is a brilliant for mullet that's what i would call it and then obviously uncle jesse i mean the john stamos mullet was a very famous mullet that's a i drum for the beach boys mullet that's fucking sick that's i lean into my uh greek american heritage i lean mullet. heavily into it but he's rocking it and it, it's it's a real solid solid haircut now we couldn't mention the mullet without also giving a homage to the ponytail the ponytail, the side tail too. The, the side, side top tail, head. the side tail, and just the ponytail in general was a fashionable fad in '82. Um, Jody Sweeten, uh, as we can see here, I mean, she must be fucking like six in this picture, but rocking the side tail, absolutely crushing it. Um, and then men, you know what? Men rock the pony too. We got we got Billy Ray, achy breaky heart, and we got a we got, little action we mullet. Got we got Seagal. We got uh, marked for death or whatever the fuck uh, of the thousand terrible movies he made. He was rocking that vigilante mullet. Tie that thing back. <laughs> the vigilante mullet. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make a movie called Vigilante, vigilante Mullet. <laughs> mullet. <laughs> Get me Steven Seagal. No, tell him not to cut his hair. Uh, we need that. But in all its glory, I mean, here it is laid out. And uh, yeah, it was a beautiful thing. And we can see, again, a kind of an overall arcing of, I think, really the mystique of the 80s side tale. We got other uh, Cameron. What's her name? Candace Cameron. Uh, Candace Cameron. And then that's oh, my uh, girl Winnie. From, uh, from Winnie Cooper. And then um, that girl is she's the daughter from not major dad. What the hell is she from? Oh, the one on the right, the blonde girl. I know. I can't remember what she's from. It's was she not? She wasn't. No. Yeah. She, damn she it. was like the TV. Oh, was that was that the sister on the the Michael Keaton? The Michael Keaton. Yes. One? yes that's the sister on the. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Her name. yes. What was that? Uh, was it Growing Pains? Uh, shit. No, Growing Pains is the one with Kirk Cameron. God damn it. Oh, oh, uh, Family Ties. Uh, ties. Family Ties. There we go. Family Ties. That was. She was on Family Ties. So yeah, obviously, was, here we go. We have all the, the iterations of Side Tail. Oh, darling Winnie Cooper. What was her oh, name? Oh, man, yeah. Oh, shit. That's My a good sweetheart. one. Yeah. Yeah. God, yeah. I can't remember. I'm sorry, Winnie. But anyway, I love you. It's okay. It's all right, Winnie. You're still my girl. But there tail. we go. And uh, let's 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 ask, like, you know, really the age old question, you know, what would we look like if we were back in that time? Hell nice, dude. Yeah, dog. I mean, absolutely. Killing it. Killing it. We look, look good. like. We look, the, we look you, good. Dude, we look. 
we look like uh, we were the uh, in what's back to school, the movie with Rodney Dangerfield, where oh, wow. Robert Downey Jr. plays like oh. the friend and he's all 80s now. Like, yo, I'm giving us like some oh. uh, Robert Downey Jr. and back to school vibes. Too, I mean, dog. I'm feeling that too. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like we would be the opening act for Duran Duran or something, oh, yeah. also as well, which is which is really funny. We're, so we're so moving on. Boingo, boingo. Or roadies, absolutely. We were the we were the coke guys. Um, so moving on in fads, obviously we have kind of these uh, these hairstyles. We have kind of the fashion. What was a fad or a thing that people loved to do a lot in '82? Um, people love going to the arcade. The arcade was a fad in 82, a proud fad. Now, granted, I was born in 82, but very soon after that, you know, probably in my 86, 87 time period, I frequented the arcade. The arcade was oh. a sweet spot. And look at it. It's got that really terrible carpet, that glow in the dark carpet. People were probably smoking cigarettes in here. It was just what a freaking vibe, dude. What a vibe. I re- I remember that there was, um, it was called the arcade, and it was over like on my side of the town. Yes, I remember it well. Built, like it was like it looked like a castle, like the outside it looked like a castle, and I can remember like be, you know begging my parents like, oh, I want to go to, like to the arcade and play games. <laughs> and dude, I remember like I was like allowed to go there like once because there definitely was like shady people in there doing, like betting, yeah. like betting on oh, yeah. pool tables or like betting on pool, like just for chain smoking, like you know doing whatever drugs that were available in the 80s in our crappy small town but dude oh, yeah that man. was and and the fact that like that place could actually like be open and be a viable business man and all it did was have all all it did was have uh you know uh, arcade games literally and it computer just, games yeah and that's just it and it's just like you think about it it was like back in the day it was like you'd go you'd put in a couple dollars you get a big old handful of grimy gross like quarters or tokens whatever the currency was and that was it you would just walk up and down you'd wait for the available machine and you would just play your heart out and it was just it, it was incredible and i don't i think that like arcades now are just like a museum or a novelty like they exist but i don't really think they exist even close to the fashion that they were and how hot they were and this time it was just it was everywhere i think it's also too it's like the games or the uh the cabinets right that existed back then it was just like cabinet after it was like wall to wall to wall games right like your shoulder to shoulder now it's like there's dance dance revolution over here or or, or something else so that takes up right. like a big um like um, area so even the vibe of what there might be a place where there is a bunch of you know arcade games but the vibe of what the arcade I you know do. used to be versus what it is now completely different all right, let's take a look at this. this is the video arcade addiction. This aired on CBS back in the day. A little piece of history here. Well, they come as if from outer space in a variety of weird guises. Defender, Pac-Man, asteroids. To fans, they represent a challenge. But to critics, as Terry Drinkwater... And I'm reports, out of they touch. They are a menace. Oh, is that Frogger? Or the Frogger? It's almost another world here in the video arcades of America. Playing Our Rampage. Games are played every month. Oh, Tail Gunner. Tail Gunner. I remember Tail, Tail Gunner. Gunner. Which can last a long time if you're skilled. Pitch yourself against the computer. Donkey. Obviously, Donkey and the OG. Donkey's so famous. So many, in fact, that psychologists are beginning to worry that some youths are becoming they only knew. on the space games. You can't get hooked on it. Are you? Give me a quarter, you piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> it keeps on making you play the game. Once you you look stoned. What are you on, goofballs? Look at the kid in the... Oh, that kid in the back had a jack. <laughs> he was like lighting up a cigarette. <laughs> he looked like he was 13. Any normal person would want to beat the machine. <laughs> and you come back? Oh, sure. Again. Jan 2982 is the date up top there. Oh, sure. <laughs> Again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Many cities Man, she would be a catch back in 82. Oh, that's a, that's a hottie in 82. Yeah, jam those buttons. This is the after school rush in Oakland. Long hours at the screen. Get the fuck out of my face of playing say, games. Can lead to extreme introversion. Youngsters communicating in a video fantasy life. It's so, it's so funny that that was like the warning signs back then to like, they'll become introverts and they, you know, it'll kill their socialization. If these people only fucking knew. That eventually everybody would just, you know, they would just be able to do that on their phones in general. They wouldn't even have to go to an arcade. 
And not only not only that, your uh, like parents like when they give uh, their kids like before you don't know, ask for a quarter, right? Now you give your kid your phone, and then they just know they know to go to the app store and then be like, yeah. buy, get. You know what I mean? Now it's instead of giving them quarters, like you literally your your credit card is just getting melted right in front of your face. Incredible though, arcade was a vibe. It was a total mm. vibe and a fad. Oh, look at these bros. And it was always like peeking over somebody's shoulder. Yeah, someone's going for high score. And there was like, there was actually a a pride to that, that high score mm. screen. You know what I'm saying? Like people would go back to defend it, beat it. You know, there it was um it was a rush, dude. Arcades were I miss arcades very much. I I think very fondly upon the age of the arcade. I remember going to like many a birthday party at an arcade, like where you oh, yeah. they would have deals where you would get like, you know, it's the birthday party special where every kid got like, you know, $10 for the quarters, whatever it was, man. It's incredible. It's a great birthday party. So yeah, a big fad <laughs> in 82 was find yourself at the arcade. Moving on. Uh, also 82 fad. Yo, bro. Sloppy Joe. It was the era of the sloppy Joe. Sloppy Joe's were in dude. That was like, lazy mom's everyday go-to meal yo we're having sloppy joe's tonight sloppy joe's i personally Man, really, i dug i dug me some sloppy joe's they were just good dude i'm i'm looking i'm like looking at this photo right now i'm like i could go for a sloppy joe right now I mean, I it looks pretty damn good I can, joe right now dude like i can't remember the sloppy the, joe's slider like that dude the yeah. last time i had one of those is i could even tell you when the last probably like in the 80s was the last time i had one yeah it was so hot to drop it dude that is it's like a <laughs> Ooh, man in the most famous of the sloppy Joe mix. The, the man, which who's That's got the sandwich, who's got the yeah. meal. What a strange uh, decision there. We're going to call it the man, which I mean, I don't know. That takes on many, many different, different, I think, connotations, really. But the man, which that's right and uh this man up here in the right is craving a man which he needs that man which bad mom's late and you want to feed him right okay Hit so that man which baby Oof. so does that so this says like man which original sloppy joe sauce so that's not like canned meat that's just like the red sloppy joe sauce because this is like this advertising is making it seem like all of that comes in that can but that's not true yeah that's like, I, I think it was like you buy the ground beef you add the man which you sauce. add the man which sauce all right <laughs> sprinkle some man which on that put a little man which love on it oh man i want a man which now again I'm, I'm it's taking me back but i do remember my mom would rock a sloppy joe every once in a while and you just i'll be happy and i remember like you put it on that like full that you know, white bread bun white with all bread. Oh, yeah. soak into it. Perfect. So yeah, that was a fad, believe it or not. Was yo, yo, we're having sloppy joes tonight, and the whole house rejoiced, and it was a good night. <laughs> sloppy Joe nights were the best. <laughs> um, another big fad of 82, and I think really the 80s in general, was yo, we be riding some BMX bikes, yo. We be we be racing, we be doing tricks in the street on them BMX bikes. I did not get into the bmx biking thing but i had lots of friends on my street who mm. would just like proudly stand near their bmx bike wouldn't want you to notice it and even having like the racing decal on the front I'm like who are you racing what are you, who are you racing I, I think i had a huffy i don't believe i ever got a bmx but uh i remember uh i can definitely remember a big part of being a child you know post coming out of the 80s was riding bikes and uh the yeah oh, dude, I was, dude i was gonna say popping yeah. a wheelie man i remember like i remember oh, how like accomplished i felt yeah. when i could pop a wheelie on my yeah. huffy dude yeah and i mean this uh this broad too over here she's like again she must have came from her aerobics class i yeah, love that like, 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 like why not be color coordinated with your you know your female bmx bike we got to go with the pink red the pink white and black motif but they, it was a it was a thing, man. It was just another big like culture. I remember um, they would like televise the different kinds of racing and stuff. I mean, it was it was a big thing. It was a really big deal to race. Um, yeah, look at these bros. This was like a typical neighborhood scene. Again, just like who were you racing? What what does that even mean? Why do you have that like tag on the front of your thing? I love it. I mean, the spoked wheels, like I remember, I never, I, I never had the spoke, like the reinforced no. wheels, you know what I mean? Like I never had those. I was not, I did not BMX or Huffy hard enough to warrant like extra just, stability in my wheels. That's just it. I never went that hard. And who can forget the 86 classic film about BMX biking? Rad. Rad. His name.
is true. All right, who's in this? Anyone? Is his way of life. Rad. His name is Crew. Oh, that's uh that old guy. It's like uh my father, the alien or whatever the hell it was, or discount Rob Lowe. <laughs> oh, dirty pool. This is so rad. Who is this kid? Oh, that's Tyler Shire. Yeah, yeah, that was Tyler Shire. Redheaded weirdo. He's got the style. There's something about the way. Was that the? That's Uncle Jesse's wife, Lori. That's Lori Laughlin. Yeah, Lori Laughlin. A young Lori Laughlin, starring a very young Lori Laughlin. And it's They're so gonna bulldoze the neighborhood if we don't win this BMX race. Mm -hmm. Back when everything could be solved by winning a race. It's gonna take a miracle to beat Art the man, huh? Team Mongoose. I love this like exec that's like coaching the fucking like bad guy stooges, the uh the other racing, the other racing team. All Listen, you, you gotta have to go, do is, is go <laughs> take your violence violence out on young children. This guy doesn't even stand a chance. Yeah, yeah. He's going for it all. <laughs> He's, He's going, going to be rad. For it all. Nice shot of some 80s hair. That's incredible. Rad. Oh, man. We may have to do a rad watch party as, a, as yeah. a bonus feature. That's too damn good. But again, as you can see, that fad bled all the way over into mainstream cinema. And people were like, you know what we need to make? We need to make a BMX racing movie because that's hot. And Lori Laughlin needs to be in it. And we're going to call it rad. And it's going to be because it is rad. And it was bad. <laughs> um, that's pretty much it. Also, uh, OK, rounding off fads, 1982. Not only were people just getting crazy on BMX bikes, but people were breakdancing fools. Mm. In Especially in 82, everybody was breakdancing. B-boy battles, just absolute insane shit. Um the moves were very prevalent. I mean, I was always impressed with people that could break dance really well. Impressive. I mean, dropping it down. Break dancing was hot as shit. Blew up into obviously the accompaniment of the music scene. A lot of music videos with break dancing. Just, just killing it. I mean, I could never break dance. It's just yeah, dude, <laughs> limberness yeah. and, and coordination. Forget it. Dude, I was going to say, like, I, I can remember who had not tried, like, when you saw some fucking, like, flipping around, like, stopping, like, oh. you know, obviously, like, you know, break dancing. Who had not tried to, you get a nice, uh, you know, the gym floor, you're at school, you know, you the, the nice, flat, smooth, waxy sort of gym floor, try yeah. and do some moves. Uh, thank God that I was so defeated by my inability to do anything oh. of the sort. Thank that God. I did that I did not continue to try oh, to break dance, but no. dude, I, I I distinctly remember and um all sorts of movies, TV shows, uh, music videos. You couldn't like turn on anything without like coming across some sort of break dancing when there was um a musical number or if it's a party, like even at like a teen party, there would always just not in real life, but on a TV show, be like, oh look at they're break dancing, <laughs> dude. Yeah. You couldn't yeah. escape it. It was like a, it was like a way of like bat like fighting like oh they're breakdance fighting mm. oh my god they're gonna show each other up breakdancing yeah this is a very famous video here but these guys are insane ladies and gentlemen uh -oh. homeboys homegirls looks like Soul Train but not city breaker these dudes shred it this is a very famous video all right I mean mm. moves are prevalent here. <laughs> I love the name. Marvel Packer. Get it? The singlets. Oh. Dude, this is awesome. I've never seen this. Get it. You've never seen this? Uh, I love this video. Get it? Get it? Powerful Packster. Oh man! I mean, like, just I can... to move my feet like that, it would be impossible. Dude, I, I would like. Here we go, Mr. Wave. Oh, you shout it over to Mr. Wave. I want it to Mr. Wave. Oh, Mr. Wave's made a fucking. He's no wonder what they call Mr. Wave. He's liquid. What? Yeah, those souls have sleekness. Oh, and he just threw oh. it over to the Glide Master. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing it to Glide Master. Get it. <laughs> How on your knuckles like that? Jesus Christ, that looks painful. <laughs> They're dressed like Thing One and Thing Two in these red singlets. Oh, and now just action. Just, just action. <laughs> No, like Mr. Action. Just action. Oh, man. Ooh, oh, he's going to... Oh, now, now Flip Rock. 
Oh, no oh. wonder why they call him Flip Rock. He flips it. Bro, I'm so impressed. I would have pulled a muscle. Yeah, I don't I know. know what that. They always, they all have that same like wow. flip left. around. Like, yeah, this kick, this like I don't know, yeah. 360 foot kicker thing, dude. They all it's impressive. That. I love how they transition with finger guns. Get nice. <laughs> <laughs> finger guns are prevalent here. Oh man! Oh, ice. Ice. <laughs> it's the iciest of ice. Oh, oh, this is man. awesome. I want. I want it's to a like three minute video. Oh my god! <laughs> is that, is that I'm Plex, fucking Plexer? exhausted. I'm exhausted <laughs> watching that. That was fucking incredible. Dude, action, icy ice, plexter, <laughs> Mister Wave. Dude, it sounds like a, a rogues gallery of uh, of like Batman villains. It's so good. That Batman village that can absolutely shred you on Red. the dance floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um hard. what an awesome way to end uh fads 1982 uh again we went all over the place there from fashion to mullets to Mr. bmxing Wave. to plexi plex and icy ice, <laughs> icy ice um, action. i wish i wish we had badass nicknames like that we'll work on our you know uh tell us in the comments what should our what should our names be what we, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll go by new monikers uh on the next show but that was good uh category two fads is uh is now done and we'll move on to our our final category category three after a quick sponsor break here on anachronology so stay tuned we'll be right back and round we'll off right everything back. 82 later after this motherfucking messages we'll be right back this sponsor break for anachronology is brought to you by my mole want to add some flair to that look pop on a my mole these designer fake moles let you customize your face with a cute, fashionable accent. Just peel and stick the reusable mole anywhere for an instant style upgrade. Go for a beauty mark on your cheek for a flirty vibe or hell, place one above your lip for a trendy face piercing effect. With different shapes and sizes to choose from, you can switch up your look daily. My moles are hypoallergenic and easy to apply and remove without irritating your skin. So peel, stick, and make a statement with the fun accessory that gives you an instant twist. My Mole, cute, fashionable moles to accessorize your face. My Mole. You are watching an Acronology. Oh, my well, mole fell off. That sucks. I just put it on before the show. Usually it sticks on here. My mole. I love it. It's wonderful sponsorship, my mole. I use it all the time. Call now for your free trial of my mole. That again is my mole. Yeah, one of the many proud sponsors here on Anachronology. And like we always say to you folks, you too can be a sponsor. Not even just a sponsor. You yourself can be an anachronaut by either joining our Patreon uh, you can go check it out at uh, patreon.com forward slash anachronology. Or if you even just want to subscribe to the YouTube channel, click that little button down there, subscribe to any future content, videos, shorties, anything we put out, you will be notified for. But uh, the Patreon's really where, where it's at. The party is definitely uh, with Patreon members. We have a good time in the old Patreon. Well, speaking of uh, the Patreon, Tom, this, uh, this, I'm just looking here what AR producer put up. This reminds me of something that's uh, this next little bit we've got uh, on the horizon here reminds me of something that might be on uh, the Patreon, this little kind of deep cut, uh, this deep cut from 1982 that uh, I have never seen. I'm an, I'm excited for what, uh, what you've discovered here with AI producer. Uh, <laughs> I want to take this as next segment here for, uh, <laughs> so you get these people can see what I'm, what I'm actually looking on my screen, but, uh, uh, let's share it with the people here. Yeah, next let's uh, let's I get into it. It's time for an entertaining segment. You're damn right, AI producer. It is time for another one of our fun, entertaining segments. Uh, this is an interesting one. This is one we like to call here at Anachronology Global Remix. So basically, the premise is, you know, we're all accustomed to something here in the States that, you know, maybe something lovable, whether it was a, a TV show or a movie or music. But the reality is, is those kinds of great ideas don't always just stay in one place. They get adopted. They get changed. And they get taken to brand new heights, sometimes amazing, sometimes catastrophic and terrible. Now, this being 1982, 
It was the year of E.T., the extraterrestrial. Everybody loved him, the adorable alien that came down and befriended Elliot, ate Reese's Pieces, and uh, his finger lit up. He was a magical fun. I even think E.T. Yeah, got drunk why. and drank some beer. He could do all kinds of shit. Well, uh, the E.T. fad didn't just stick here in the States. It also happened to make its way all the way over to, I believe, Africa with a absolute hidden gem called <laughs> Nuki. <laughs> You can see Nuki uh, featured here in all of his glory. There is Nuki. I mean, Nuki just looks really rough. He looks awful. He looks like if E.T. lived on the streets, he has, he's got like a boogery under nose. I mean, Nuki is looking really terrible. I like on the cover, like they can't, they, they're they ripping off the, obviously the famous silhouette of uh, E.T. and Elliot on the bike flying in front of the moon. But uh, this is what, like in Africa where they have no bikes. So they're just standing on the ground, like holding hands, but they still have the, the same motif. Like we need to put uh, the alien in with the little boy hero in silhouette in front of the moon. But this is just like you said, like look at Nuki's face, dude. He is, he is not cute like E.T. He is not cute like E.T. at all. He's fetus. Oh, it looks really it's and and wait till we watch a couple of clips from it. Is this it is as bad as it looks? So AI producer throwing me some information here. Nuki is a 1987 South African science fiction film um based on an original story. I don't think that's true. <laughs> um, and it's saying here the plot concerns an alien, of course. Nuki and uh, who crash lands on earth and seeks help from two children to reunite with his brother, Miko, who has been captured by the evil U S government. Uh, the film was considered considered a knockoff of Steven Spielberg's 82 film ET, the extraterrestrial, and is also considered one of the worst movies ever made. <laughs> wow. What a, what an honor to, to, to have Steven Spielberg ET mentioned in the same breath and worst movie ever made. Um, oh man, high praise. It just looks absolutely effing terrible. Here's a great side by side of Nuki versus ET. We could see up here, there, ET has his magic finger. Nuki also has a magic finger. He's shooting something out of that finger. Nuki, what are you doing, dude? Oh man. Nuki. Let's look at so some Nuki footage. It, and in like the the filtrum area here, like below Nuki's nose, like he's got like coke, like coke booger runoff. Like it's all why is it all white underneath his nose? Why is he I doing know, space Nuki, coke? This is a children's think, movie, Nuki. Yeah, I think Nuki was doing some blow, dude. Um, all right, here's the Nuki trailer in all of its glory. Let's let's get really into this. I'm super excited for this. Oh, Jesus. Two space travelers no. are separated. Not if I find out. Right. Hey, what? Good heavens, there's another one. Touchdown in 15 seconds. This is awesome. One is That's recovered. Tight. I want this creature alive. The I want this creature alive. I love how it's just these like horrible animated like stars flying through the air. Another must find his way on a strange planet. Oh, oh, the perils of the jungle. <laughs> Yo. He froze him. Uh oh. <gasps> what you do, Nuki? And finding two friends. Nuki's already get mauled by a lion. Oh, Nuki. I need my brother. He talks really well. Nuki's got Nuki's got a nice what dialect. What's the name of man you look for? America. America. No, America's the country where I come from. <laughs> Discount uh -huh. the It will take extraterrestrial spirit and courage, along with the help of two native brothers, to reunite these space travelers. In the tradition of E.T. And in the tradition of E.T. Again, it's so on the nose, like straight up ripping it off, but it's in the tradition of E.T. Close Nuki. encounters of a third kind. Wow. Comes a magical Aww. adventure of two pairs of brothers from different universes. Nuki. Nuki. Wow. That is magical. 
It's incredible. Let's really, uh, we'll round off this uh, this global remix uh, and Nuki with a quick Nuki scene. This is uh, called Nuki Scream. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, is he dead? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Nuki! <laughs> <laughs> He's got tubes up his nose. No wonder he has like Coke boogers. They shove these yeah, tubes up Nuki's nose. <laughs> they're they're, Poor they're, Nuki. they're mainlining him Coke up there. <laughs> it's just Nuki. all the cuts of Nuki. 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 <laughs> I have found my new ringtone. <laughs> this is awesome. Nuki. Nuki? The specimen Nuki. shows interesting and strong reactions. <laughs> What's the brother's name? Miko? They're going to start throwing in some Mikos. Nuki? Don't you die on me, Mike Miko. Okay, so let's just say 90% of the movie is just the other alien brothers screaming Nuki. He did it all for the Nuki. Oh, wow. I mean, that's pretty fucking spectacular. Oh, my God. Go out today. Uh, I don't. I wonder if Nuki is available on streaming. I don't think Netflix is hot to this yet. It will eventually be on the top 10 on Netflix. If oh not, God, get after it. Get after some Nuki. That's amazing. That could be another watch party. If we can find us some Nuki, we may have to get down on Nuki. Dude, I wow. I am surprised that in my uh, in in all of our you know the amount of movies that we have come across in our lifetimes that I have never heard of Nuki until fucking <laughs> very recently. Wow. First <laughs> time dude, global is... remix here on an acronology. You've heard it first <laughs> about Nuki. It's all about that Nuki. Fucking terrible. It's awesome. New all right so that's uh that was a fun segment we learned a little something there uh moving on to the final third and final category here in 1982 oh, uh was none music, other than right? music talking about music everybody loves music um again i was too much of a baby to really get into music but i mean this music that came out in 82 was all over the 80s um there was a lot of uh you know a lot of variety in the 80s everything from just like cool you know um hip-hop to pop to rock um another thing too about like the early 80s too it's it was a, it was a, a little bit of a changing of the guard right because the 70s was like 70s. like 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 rock and roll it was disco you know and um this was just kind of a the 80s was a really it stands out musically because it's a weird period of music you know it's it was very much like synths and saxophone like there were very predominant sounds that people kind of associate with the eighties, but incredibly different than the seventies going right into it. And like you said, changing the guard. I mean, I think the only uh, band that I know that from like the sixties, to the seventies to the eighties, like the nineties is like the Rolling Stones, right? That's like the only kind of constant from like, as oh, far yeah. as like a global superstar, there's always, like you said, cha that's changing the guard. So there's always like new blood coming in and it being on the, uh, you know, end of uh, the really early of the eighties coming on the heels of the seventies. There's no more disco. Uh, there's no more Zeppelin, you know, there's no more, uh, I think just it's like the start of like Sabbath or kind of like, you know, heavy, heavy metals kind of in its infancy. Hip hop, like you said, is, is around, but it's in its infancy. So interesting to see what is like on the, you know, the, the top billboard 100 hits or whatever of uh, 82. Cause I know that I'm sure there's going to be like, Oh man, I know that song, but I wouldn't have placed it in 82, even though it's very popular. Yeah, absolutely. Let's take a peek at what was hot music wise in 82, starting off with uh, everybody's Ooh. sweetheart, Olivia Newton John. That's cool when you have three, uh, three different names, uh, Olivia Newton John. I mean, obviously, everybody knows her from Greece. That was her kind of big thing. That was her big. I and think kind it, of known for moment was being uh, I don't know the character she was because I'm not a big grease Sandy, fan Sandy, there you go Sandy, Sandy, Sandy. sure that makes yeah. that makes sense but i mean she's canadian i think right she was like a canadian sweetheart. isn't she like canadian by way of like new zealand or something like oh, wow. she doesn't have that I accent buy that. Like, i buy that she does have she does have uh, an accent but if if physical is 1982 uh this video is a bunch of uh i mean we were showing some of the fashion choices uh, oh, earlier gotcha. in the show there is all physical is it is uh i would say in shape women uh in very tight 
gym 80s gym clothing just like very dry humping the air just dry like literally just dry humping the air through the whole music video so yeah and they... it's this double entendre thing yeah. that's fun you know let's get physical um but yeah it is one of those jams that's always on some kind of 80s playlist mm -hmm. but uh definitely came out in 82 br uh, bringing her to i guess it says here she was eight weeks at number one with this song so pretty damn popular in 82 get physical um foreigner talk about carries up carryovers from the 70s um foreigner hung in there man um waiting for a girl like you was their big hit in 82 i mean look at these dudes these are i mean every one of these guys you could score fucking drugs from look at the one guy literally has a gun, gun in his waist dude, that, <laughs> dude i'm dude i'm, I'm laughing it's wow. like, like dude he is looking like he's waiting for a girl like you he's like don't make me use this get over here and take off your clothes like he is this is this is brutal what a choice to have that in the photo shoot and you know the photographer's like we're not asking him to get rid of that yeah. he the gun stays in the waistband that dude and I'm, I'm like what did that guy play in the band i don't want to know he's a fucking devious looking motherfucker he Jesus. got the girls too. <laughs> yeah he oh got something God. but uh yeah you're right so foreigner waiting for a girl like you was was a hit in the time um earth, earth and fire dude from the 70s just an absolute power group funky as hell let's group Dude, earth earth wind and fire this i am i am very glad we're going through this because uh, i remember my dad liking earth wind and fire i am gonna pull up some earth wind and fire on you know <laughs> on spotify this week or something because i haven't thought of earth wind and fire in forever i bet there is some jams on uh let's groove or if this is their album from 1982 but uh i remember my dad playing earth wind and fire so that's a good good find 82 i want to listen to a little earth wind and fire here in britain present day yeah yeah and they and they they've last the test of time i mean september is just a song that oh, yeah. gets so much play not even in the the month of september but it is just that like <laughs> get up Th these guys had the ultimate get up and dance songs it was like literally and it either the titles of the songs were telling you to get up and dance or let's groove <laughs> yeah. you know like it would they didn't waste any time to be like get up and motherfucking dance and this dude, dude, the homeboy on the left, like his look at how many one, two, three, four, five. Dude, he has like Ropes? seven. He's wrapped a rope around his waist like eight times for a belt, man. That's a bold move. That's a the bold choice. The getups are incredible, dude. Amazing costume choice. choices. And they always played on this kind of like far out, like Nubian, like Egyptian thing that they all mm. the album art and everything. They were they were really cool, man. And I want to say they to this day they still tour, so. Rock on, listen, Earth, Wind, listen, and listen, Fire, Earth, Wind dude. And fire. Let's Groove came out. Hall and Oates, baby. Love the, from Hall and Oates. The, the fearsome duo, duo of Daryl Hall and John Oates, man. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I, can't go for, I Can't Go For That is a great jam by Hall and Oates. That was 82. I love how he's wearing a 1984 shirt for some reason. <laughs> That's a little off the beaten path. He, <laughs> being here in 82, here he is. Two years later, with a shirt uh, commemorating the, the year he's in, the album cover is great. Like I don't like looks so tiny compared to. And to he's Darryl doing Hall. like weird, like he's doing weird, like yeah, this weird like dance move, like I don't know, jazz hands, but they're down by his side, and uh, Daryl Hall is doing the like, "Don't shoot me, hands up." I mean, I I cannot say that the album art is by in any means good, but uh, Daryl Hall in general is their music fantastic fantastic especially in 1982 absolutely yeah and uh, i can't go for that slaps oh, yeah. i mean that's a great it's got a great kind of groove to it it's solid man uh the jay giles band centerfold uh yeah um, i mean i'm not a huge jay giles fan look at these guys though another just like what a motley crew of like these guys all look like nerd rock you know i mean look at dude on the right there he's got like a big fro he's got mutton chops he looks like he's the coolest IT tech you've ever met. Um, I can't remember if it is the lead singer of the Jay Giles band or the guy who plays the harmonica in the Jay Giles band, who also might be the lead singer. But uh, one of the members of the Jay Giles band is, as far as I'm aware, from our hometown. At least in our hometown. Like, that I don't know tracks. if he... I don't know if he like lived there for, Field, Massachusetts like, pride for like a duration to put in one of those things, like, you know, like a Wikipedia rabbit hole. I went down, it was like famous people from here. And it, like, it was like 
you know, <laughs> the harmonica, harmonica player, guy, Jay Giles band. I was like, oh shit, we're so, on the map, baby. Yeah, so very, very apropos wow. that this is like in the top ten. When you know the harmonica players wow. from our hometown. Wow, to think that maybe the angel in the centerfold was a woman in Pittsfield. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Wow, Jay Giles band. My girl Stevie Nicks, Stevie Nicks. accompanying Don Henley of the Eagles. Uh, yeah, this was a this was a hot track, leather and lace, almost kind of describing the two. And mm. they actually had an intimate relationship okay. during this time. I mean, who didn't Stevie Nicks bang in this decade, really? But um, yeah, man. I mean, Stevie Nicks. I think this was her kind of crusade to being like the rock godmother. I mean, she's just she's Stevie Nicks, dude. I mean, she just like opens her hands and doves fly out and shit. I mean, it, it, it's kind of hard to turn, especially like, uh, I mean, in the 80s, if you're Don Henley, you know, of the Eagles, and she's hot to trot off you know, Fleetwood Mac. I mean, who are you going to turn down some session time with Stevie Nicks? I mean, you guys are doing coke, drinking, you know, drinking booze at the studio. You're yeah. not just making music. You're having, you're making memories up in there, having a little fun. Oh, yeah, sure. man. Well, they're steaming up the windows yeah. in that studio. Yeah, sure. That's, that's some hot shit. Dude. Sure. Yeah. Stevie, Stevie Nicks was was definitely a hot number. And uh, yeah, this was this was a big hit in that time. Uh yeah, the little uh little sexy duo there with uh Henley Nix. Uh <laughs> yeah, I, I I really I don't really like this song, but I we have to acknowledge that it did come out in this time. But come on, Eileen by uh Dexy's Midnight Runners. They look like they all sleep in a van together. And is that Eileen in the middle? <laughs> Dude, I mean, like, like the, the two guys on the left, like they look like how this song, like how their clothes, like their faces, like look how the song sounds. Like it's a very, uh, I don't even want to call it like a, like a working class kind of sound, but it's got the, the fiddle is playing. There's just kind of like a really simple four by four. There's the unintelligible like -ra -ra. <laughs> like just some someone screaming gibberish. Like this, they are the embodiment of this song. Just their look. Yeah, they look like when they're not in the recording studio, they're like out like the artful dodger, just like <laughs> pulling pranks and like yeah. drifting on the street to make Stealing money to fucking survive. <laughs> Oh my god. They're a very strange group. And this is one of those like obnoxious white people sing along songs mm. that come on at any like 80s bar oh, yeah. or I hate people that pull it up at karaoke and they just want you to sing with them. You're like, get the hell out of here, dude. Yeah, you know, I I, I even it's been a minute come since on I've yourself. heard Yeah, it's been a minute since I've heard this song, but uh I, I think this is definitely nothing against you guys, Dixie Minute Rudders, but I think I think the masses kind of did your song a disservice by playing it out. I, I they, agree. You think they kind of played it out. <laughs> Your looks aren't doing you any favor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, bro, uh, this honestly, I, I'm a big 38 special fan. Oh, yeah. I think these dudes all just embody. I mean, they mm -hmm. just look like a band named 38 special. Um, this song, I mean, this song does jam caught up in you mm. is a fucking slap and jam. Oh, yeah. I do think it's a little creepy, uh, to yeah. be caught up in you little girl. girl. Um, I don't want to know where that came from or how that, I, but look at these guys, these guys all dated very inappropriately young women. Uh, I'm trying to remember if this is the, I can't remember if this is the music video where they are like, they are playing at a show and some like guy, it's like at a bar, you know, like a, oh like a honky tonk joint, but dude, like the story of, uh, I, can't, I, mean, I can't remember if that's the one I, so I don't want to speak out of turn, but I'll say this. Uh, not only is their music good, 38 specials music videos are awesome too. So awesome. if you like to do yourself a favor, guys, if you haven't, if you're unfamiliar with 38 special, 100%, uh, pull up a little 38 special greatest hits and then maybe, uh, do a little, do a little look around on YouTube for some videos because it's early 80s. These guys are hopped up on coke and, <laughs> and they're just having a great old time. But yeah, 38 specials legit. Um, and just, to, you know, listen, a word of advice, don't go driving about round a middle school blasting this uh, from your car because that's yeah. bad. Don't ever do that. Um, oh, oh, yeah. We brought I mean, top again, of the show. Uh, top of the show, we'd be remiss to not mention uh, one of the biggest albums of all time that dropped in 82. It was Michael Jackson Thriller. I mean, this iconic John Landis amazing music video that just like changed everything not I, this, only just from like an elk like that's just what's so crazy i think about 
even just Michael Jackson. It's like he didn't just elevate the album game. He elevated the music video game. Like he made big, like cinematic music videos. I was like, wasn't this at one time like the longest music video? And when it came on, you didn't just get the like what two minutes, 30 seconds that is thriller. You got like the whole music video. Like they played like the yeah. seven, seven, eight, nine minute long, like short film that was to like that's how much like pull uh Michael Michael had like you're getting like you don't know don't you play the whole thing I made the whole thing you gotta play the whole thing like he got yeah. he got to take over literally of one sixth of the whole hour with his music video dude incredible I mean and when you got Vincent Price dropping mm -hmm. it on your on that track too mm -hmm. I mean I want to say Vincent Price died not too long, long after, after that as one of his great you know, kind of uh, contributions uh, to to oh, the no, music right. scene. No, he was in he was in which call it. He was in Edward Scissorhands. So that can't be oh, right. It, right. It, but either way, but either way, yeah, he, hung, you're right. Right. he hung in there for a bit longer. Yeah, so yeah, he hung, but either he hung way, in there until when was Scissorhands? Ninety. Ninety. We about it. Yeah, ninety. Ninety. Ninety or ninety one. All right. Ninety. Ninety one. I think. Yeah. yeah. But uh, awesome thriller, thriller oh, yeah. to this day is just it's one of those albums. And now, like, I mean, how many times have they re-released it on vinyl? I mean, it's just, I mean it's that the dance, like the dance choreography, Amazing. like they, they always uh, like that, like Frankenstein, -y, like zombie walk. Oh, like, you know, I, like it's so iconic. You know where that's from. People throw it in till this day in their repertoire. Dude, just in incredible. That all jacket. around. The jacket, jacket. The freaking thriller jacket. Um, and then to round off, um, I think this one saved the best for last in 82, uh, Boogie in Your Butt by Eddie Murphy. Uh, I think an incredibly underrated jam. Uh, Eddie Murphy had no business making this song. Uh, look at him. He knows he's, he's in on the joke, too, is that it's just like, what are you doing, man? I mean, drugs, obviously, <laughs> but Boogie in Your Butt, uh, pr yeah, premiered in 82. Okay, so I am learning something today. Uh, I did not know Boogie in Your Butt existed. I am very familiar with My Girl Wants to Party all the time. I mean, with yeah. Rick uh, Rick James, there he's in the studio. He's all fucking blowed out. Yeah, <laughs> Boogie in Your Butt. Okay, yeah. Boogie in Your Butt. Check it out. I don't really want to play it. Uh, we'll get we'll get copyright saying, but I would say you got to go grab that today. You got to throw that on your on your next playlist. Play it loud and proud. Dude, this looks fake. This looks it, I know it's so ridiculous. It feels fake, but yeah, boogie in your butt. Um, rounding off the incredible oh. music of 1982. Um, Dude, like like we said, uh, like I said, I didn't know like uh, wow. particularly what was going to be like on the you know the, the Billboard Top 100 charts, but dude, 38 special, dope as hell. Thriller, dope as hell. I mean, there's, uh, I'm sure could, yeah, and I'm sure we could go down like you know if we had uh, 20 more minutes to go through you know everyone on the top 100 list of 82, we'd be like, oh man, but Daryl Hall and John Oates. I mean, there are some bangers in 1982. So if you guys want to do a little, uh, don't count out the early 80s as being some sort of uh, era where there isn't some tunes to thump because just as we showed in freaking what a handful of uh, bands and songs that we just pulled from, there's some bangers. Absolute bangers. Um, and before we go to our last uh, commercial break of the show, let's do a really fast, quick segment that ties in with our music Ooh. category. Let's do a little guilty pledge just because we're on the beaten path with music. And let's talk about some things uh, that maybe we're a little embarrassed to admit we like. But again, hence the name of the segment. It is a guilty pledge of mm. ours. Uh, let's go right into it, dude. Absolutely. You mentioned it. Guilty Pledge, oh. Howlin' Oats. I'm going to say it. I like Howlin' Oats. Um, I I feel like I even have a few of their vinyl. I think I, I hold it pretty near and dear. And, you know, I'll, I'll throw that. I'll throw those jams on. I'm, I'm a, I like a little man eater. I, I like a little um, uh, rich girl, bro. Rich, rich girl. girl Dude, rich girl slap. I, I fucking love rich girl. Such a good song. I can't go for that. Kiss is on my list. I mean, mm. dude, it's it's a very it's literally talk about a, a list. They have a list of some really deep hits. Uh, Sarah Smile. Oh, it's Sarah Smile. Bangs, and they kind of they're interesting because they just they would write these almost like poppy ballads, but they worked. They just they they worked into their whole thing, you know, like who they were. Oh uh, God, uh, what's um? You make my dreams come true, right? You make my dreams come true. Is that yeah. the name of that song? Yeah, is that yeah, dude? I mean, come on. I mean that that even that poppy little Ugh. like feel good. Like you can be like in a shitty yeah. mood. I've, I've been in a shitty mood and been like yeah. Doop, doop, doop. You oh, get it like all right, all right, hold on. You're pulling pull me out a little bit. You're like if you ever just bit. need that like go to movie montage mm. in your life, you put that on and oh, it's yeah. just you're montaging it. You're going mm -hmm. and you're making everybody's your dreams come true. 
Um, you know, it's funny. I kind of look at these dudes and I feel like we could pull this off. Yeah. Yeah, we totally could. I like that. Yeah. You make a great, you make a great. <laughs> dude, you're pulling the shit. I'm really off. pulling dude. that off. Absolutely, <laughs> dude. <laughs> you're pulling oh. it off too. I have to be honest with you. The hair, that hair looks great on you, dude. Oh man. I look, I'm you're looking like. now. I'm looking like um, uh, Prince Valium in uh, uh, <laughs> in Spaceballs. <laughs> like I'm all sleepy eyed. I'm all like sleepy eyed. I know. I got a mile mile dude. long cocaine and alcohol stare going on there, yeah, dude. The, like the hair and mustache is super like fitting with your perfect. Face, dude. Yeah. Dude. So perfect. yeah, that answers a question. I, I guess that's why we're Hollow Notes fans. Hey, dude, I know. I know what we're being for Halloween next year. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, moving on, uh, we, you know, honestly, I'm also guilty pledge. I am a fan of Asia. Asia. For those of you who don't know, this is Asia. They have nothing to do with anything Asia or Asian. Uh, they're just a bunch of look like white dudes chilling, kind of grizzled. Look like they've seen, they've seen better days. But the thing that also is really sweet about Asia is Asia always had banging Badass. album covers. Yeah, like yeah. Crazy, like eclectic sci-fi uh album covers that and it was always kind of the same artist i always dug that yeah, about like Asia. mobius or it's like mobius like i mean it's like something from the i mean it is the 80s but it looks like it's like 70s wacky like borderline psychedelia but not the yeah the elmar is hey can we put like a bitchin sea serpent on our album for this one yeah we can yeah can we have like and, a uh, space Sphinx, <laughs> like a fucking down in, on the waterfall know, island. Dude. It's yeah. floating in air. Whatever, whatever goes, you know. And uh yeah, they're like real big. Was big one was heat of the moment. That was the mm -hmm. this is the heat of the moment. I uh I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like I'm. Mean, that's the one everybody knows. But I give Asia Mad props again just for the fucking bitching ass uh album art too so plus for that yeah. on the guilty pledge and, and i believe i believe that their big hit that that was in um um i think they got like a resurgence in the late or early 2000s because that was on one of the radio stations on grand theft auto vice city so i mean like yeah they like they knew like they were they transcended uh oh. you know the era the era so so well that rockstar when they're making that game they were like yeah. oh this takes place in the 80s put asia on there too because asia embodies yeah. the 80s by the needle drop we need mm -hmm. it um moving on you know what guilty pledge alan parsons bro <laughs> alan alan, parsons project dude dude the alan parsons project alan parsons himself i gotta say alan parsons is kind of baller i didn't i didn't know this until recently he apparently was a board engineer for pink floyd and apparently well, that was, makes like, a lot very, of sense was, it makes a lot of sense because when you hear like his kind of stylings um you, you can feel it. And even in some of his, his audio engineering and stuff. And I mean, he did like eye in the sky. I think it's the most like famous Alan Parsons project band uh, project. But I mean, dude, I mean, the guy was around for a lot of the eighties, put out a few yeah, days. This, this photo, he's looking like, no wonder why he was, uh, he dipped out from Pink Floyd. He looks like he's pissed at Roger Waters. He's like, God damn it, Roger. Let me run this fucking soundboard. You want to know what? I'll just do it myself. I'm done with Pink Floyd. I am now going to do my own project. The Alan Parsons Project. Pretty much. He's like, I'm sick of recording grandfather clocks for your fucking albums, okay? <laughs> But I do think, yeah, I mean, he's another guy that I think, you know, his name, he's a little cheese ball. But, yo, dude's got chops as an engineer. And when you bring that to, like, the performance front, it's a pretty killer combo. And then, like you said, you get the Alan Parsons project. Dude, I haven't thought of him in fact. That's another one. Like, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Maybe a little Alan Parsons I'm going to have to pull up this week. Cause, yeah, uh, you're going to have a hell of a, spot a, lot, a Spotify playlist uh, this week. I haven't thought of him in a while. Rounding off our guilty pledge, um, I hate to say it. They are 80s darlings, and mm. um, I think uh, Believe in Love was their 82 uh, single that made them really, really famous, but, bro, Huey Lewis. And Huey the news, Lewis, dog, the damn news. I would be remiss to not bring up Mr. Mr. Lewis and his news. Absolutely. <laughs> that one dude behind Huey, he looking like if Agent Smith was in Huey Lewis in the news, dude. He is not <laughs> like the others, man. He's waiting to assimilate somebody. Look at this dude. Uh, Mr. Anderson, I will play my harmonica. Yeah, Man. and then this like kind of real androgynous looking guy with the suspenders back there, looking like a little yeah, he's leather got leather suspenders at that. He's, yeah, he's got some like throwing some Chris Catan vibes out. He's like a little man. 
But uh, yo, Huey Lewis just it's the voice, it's it's the the bar. I would just say it's like bar rock, it's like it comes on, it's just an embodiment of it's hip to be square, it's I want a new drug, it's the back to the future stuff. It's like, boy, you talk about a band that cemented themselves in the 80s. When you think about the 80s, it's like if there's ever a soundtrack, they gotta be on it. They can't yeah, not be. The- uh what's what's the um oh, god the what's the main tr- the opening song that's playing in back to the future it's um the, the where he's going oh, through power, uh, the power, he's, power, power of, love. of love the power of love power oh. like we said sound would you said like that song uh Slap. like the sound the sound of that like is 100 but 80s through and through and who is literally Amazing. the voice of that is huey lewis in the news like 100 yeah. percent. he's in the damn movie you're just too yeah, darn yeah, he's a loud. Principal. Yeah, he's a yeah, just too, yeah, he's like the principal or whatever at the the auditions for the talent show. Yeah. That's right. It's just so good. And yeah, again, I think uh and then even like going to like keeping that the music alive in kind of the the idea of the 80s. You always think about American Psycho. Always think about oh, yeah. Patrick <laughs> Bateman. It's iconic. in the 80s. It's iconic. so iconic, but it's perfect. What another just great tie back into the 80s so guilty pledge they're on the list mm, i think bravo. i think yeah, all bravo. those pretty much embody some a real guilty pledge of the music of 82 all right so let's uh go to our final break we'll be right back and we'll wrap we'll up this year that was right 1982 so hang tight we'll see you after these very short messages so get your asses back to the chopper this segment of the Acronology Podcast is brought to you by Northrop's Pet Wigs and more. Want to give your pets some extra flair? Northrop, Northrop's offers the cutest selection of wigs and accessories for dogs and cats. Choose from fun hairstyles like afros, mohawks, bangs, and braids made with real human hair for a natural look. Dress them up for any occasion with our tutus, ties, sunglasses, and hats, too. At Northrop's, we have endless options to customize your furry friend. Make them the star of your next party or photo shoot. Watch them strut their stuff in style. Northrop's wigs are designed for comfort with adjustable straps and come in all pet sizes. Give your pet the gift of glam and get some laughs with Northrop's pet wigs and more. You are watching an Acronology. Indeed. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, Northrop's Pet Wigs and more, our sponsor for that last segment. Tom, uh, what a little journey to 1982 this episode brought us. Uh, I am stoked. Like I said before we went to break, I am stoked to go listen to, uh, I'm going to listen to a little Huey Lewis, listen to a little Earth, Wind & Fire. I'm going to listen to a little Alan Parsons. Going to dig back into the, the 80s the 80s disc co- uh, catalog of music, Get a little uh, get a little more culture. Yeah, man, you got quite a playlist to cook in for you mm. coming up here this week. Yeah, it's great. Music's always a fun one. We've had fun. I mean, we've kind of been everywhere. We've talked about, we've talked the tech, we've talked the fads, we've 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 talked the music. We've had some fun segments. New time uh, for a new segment. Key. Another segment? Okay, <laughs> fine. Before we go, we'll give you even one more segment. One more. This last segment before we say adieu to 1980. Two is a fun one that we like to call uh, Time Wines. So Mm. basically, Epoch Traverser is a pretty incredible supercomputer. Not only can it take us anywhere uh, and have us temporally travel to different places in the past and history, um, it also has the ability to allow um, multiple timelines to reach out to us and to to contact us. Uh, It's an incredible technology uh, that we have harnessed. So every once in a while, uh, we do get contacted by, I guess I would call it ourselves in other places, in other timelines. I guess it's basically string theory. So there's the idea that I exist somewhere else in some different time in some different place. And so doesn't Clay. Uh, So yeah, time winds. And uh, let's see, uh, we were actually checking our our Time Wines uh, answering video service, and it looks like a message has come in fresh off the wire. Let's see who it is. Up, brother. It's you from another time, 1974 to be exact. As you can see, I sure rock a different look and honestly probably party a hell of a lot more than you have ever done in your lifetime. Okay. I play keyboard on the weekends in an Asia cover band. 
I have an illegitimate nine-year-old son named Max who keeps trying to live with me in my trailer. I tell him there isn't enough room for him, but he still shows up every weekend claiming it's my time to watch him. But besides all those interesting facts, I am dropping you a line to tell you that the you, or I should say the us, in your timeline needs to pick up the slack. I have spoken to a few of us throughout the space-time continuum. And let me just say, you are slacking in the BDE department. You Whoa. give off a bit of a simp vibe. Whoa. Anyway, just a friendly reminder that we rock, so please stop making us look bad. Thanks. Well, uh... Ouch! I mean, for a segment called Time Whining, uh, this should be called time bitching and moaning because i feel like uh you Ouch. from 1974 was being a little a little rough around the that edges was very here. rough that was very very sharp and pointed me from 1970s 1970s me look i don't mind the look 1970s me is is rocking there and i think it's pretty cool that i i play keyboards in an asia cover band i don't dig the whole not like acknowledging my bastard son uh, interesting, very interesting message from uh, 70s me in another timeline. Thank you, I guess. I guess I'll pick up the slack, so to say. Whatever. I mean, I, the upside, really at least you, that. on the upside, at least you do have a pretty sweet trailer that your son wants to come crash at. So you probably have got some like Budweiser lights up in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, you probably at least yeah. get, you probably, that's, oh, actually, no, you can't. That was 1974. Uh, you can't have them. It was 1982. Well, in either case, you probably have some sort of malt liquor, uh, you know, some something up yeah. there to go, you know, in the trailer that goes hand in hand living in a trailer. Maybe some wild Turk. Who knows? Just yeah, having you know, some good times in my, in my trailer park. Fun. But that's uh that's pretty much it for our show today uh thank you for tuning in as always we always appreciate obviously all the yes. support all, all the all the people that have subscribed to the channel people that have checked out all of our other outlets our instagram we're on tiktok we're always trying to throw our little shorties up there to keep everybody entertained and um yeah i mean we try to make these weekly um, we always throw out the option for you to uh, to join our Patreon, to subscribe to the channel. You can do all of those things or one of those things. You get to choose. And I say it every week, you know, uh, hopefully uh, one of these days somebody will, uh, the like the Discord is, in, is uh, obviously the um, uh, where members can all talk and converse. But any video, like Tom said, any short videos, anything we put out, uh, just comments, uh, <laughs> whether you like it, like, like us, what we're doing good, we're doing bad. The engagement's fun. Uh, we'd like to hear from you guys what uh, you'd like to see more of, what you like, what you did see, what you didn't like. Either way, uh, we have uh, a much fun making the show, so I hope you have some fun watching it. Like Tom said, you can subscribe for free. You want to throw us a couple of shekels on Patreon. And, uh, you know, this is an acronology where it's about damn time. I love it. Absolutely. Thanks, Clay. Always have a fun time. And thanks, everybody. Right, for. Right. We will catch you in another time, in another place, on another episode. Later. See ya.